Hello and welcome to Overdose Cinco. Here is Latuzak with introductions. All right, uh, welcome to Overdose number five. Um, and I guess we'll start with me. I am uh, Latuzak. I hail from a small town in the northwestern suburbs of Chicago. I smell like forgotten hopes and lost dreams. And um, <laughs> we'll move on to the next one. He is uh, Surf Dub. Uh, he's also uh, related to me, uh, either biologically or in some way, shape, or form. Um, also hails from a, an area somewhere in the northwest suburbs of Chicago, and um, and actually is uh, is our gracious host. So check out Surf Dub Entertainment and the uh, lovely videos he puts up every week. That's fucking right. Our special guest this week, uh, going two weeks in a row, because last week we were all inebriated and uh, he seemed like a great guy, is Gilman. Uh, he hails from a basement somewhere. That's all I know. He has very cool toys. Uh, he, you know, may break into a lightsaber battle. He mentioned a Star Wars Yoda robe. And uh, oh, wow. I don't know. This is so. an empire. Come on. <laughs> Next, we have one of our regulars, uh, which is Sean Shank. He hails from somewhere up in the northern area of uh, the Chicago land outer rim of Lake the Borderlands. Yep. I'm on some rim. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then last but uh, certainly not least, we have the Yellow Bus. Uh, he is our yeah. friend from out west, a couple hours behind, uh, somewhere in the land of Arizona-ish. And uh, I think that does it for everybody. So welcome, and uh, I guess we'll get started. Let's start the show. So who's ready for a topic? I just need to mention that this is a Empire robe, not a Jedi robe. Yeah, let's fucking start with that. So, what's the difference for the ignorant people like me who who don't who don't know and and don't give many fucks? Empire is the like Darth Vader, evil, the evil side. Yeah, Empire is the bad guys, but they're pretty cool though. So. No, I understand that, but didn't you say this is not? Oh, you said Jedi and Empire. Yeah, I thought you said bro, Star it's Repu technically Republic and Empire, but. We don't need to oh, get. I'm it. sorry. Too many beers and bong resin. <laughs> I I thought I heard. I thought you said it's not a Star Wars robe. It's it's a uh, Empire robe. Empire. I think I actually referred to it as you're going to break out a Yoda robe later on because I heard something of a Star Wars deal and I just thought of Yoda and uh, thought that would be a great that would be a great robe to have and with a little hood and the ears and everything you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yoda Snuggy. <laughs> Touch me, you will. <laughs> Keep you warm, I must. <laughs> anyway. You should do, we should do a whole show with Jim as fucking Yoda one time. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yoda? The kids are always asking me about that stuff. They're, 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 Logan's like, talk like Yoda. Just talk like Yoda, you know? And I always try to think of funny lines, though, you know? Like, pick a shit, they will, you know, and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, you but always after, take the beginning and put it at the end. And then yeah, you after a while, I just, I'd say anything backwards, you know? But uh, after a while, though, it uh, starts uh, clogging up the throat muscles. Uh, you got to keep yeah. those open. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Yellow Bus? They've done the introductions in Yoda speak. <laughs> oh, that yeah, that that'd be a fucking good one. Well, next time I come around, I might have something up my sleeve. So I was kind of going from the cuff today. Something uh, up your sleeve other than kitty candy and like that that creeper stare when you stand outside by little kids. Hey, listen, I'm just waiting for my kid at school, and if I happen to be observing other children, <laughs> you know, uh, in the comfort of my Barry on the sidewalk, you know, then so be it. As long as you're not conspicuous, you can lure you can lure them in. Listen, with the no candy. one's called the police yet, so I'm, <laughs> I'm legit. Act on your feeling. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so what do you guys want to start with? Let's uh, let's let our special guest, who we totally overlooked last week, Gilman, uh, pick our first topic. What do you want to talk about, man? Um, how about we go with the country music coming mainstream? Start at the top. So I think this this was this was Shank's topic, right? What what did yeah. you what was your inspiration for this? Mr. Yeah, so um, I'm at work on a Saturday, you know, because I graciously work weekends, um, totally because I absolutely have nothing better to do on a weekend. And I'm talking to uh, one of my associates, and you know, she's a high school senior, and she's talking about how country is cool. And, you know, 45 minutes to an hour later after I got off the ground from laughing and pissing myself because I thought it was absolutely <laughs> fucking hilarious, um, you know, I kind of just sat back and questioned her. And she's running off. You know, it's funny because she's naming off these names. And right in front of me is a People magazine with the same douchebag she's talking about. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, I guess it's kind of the same thing when uh, hip hop, you know, 10, 15 years ago kind of went mainstream and started getting radio play. And, you know, now I guess they play country everywhere. See, I don't listen to the radio, so I would never know that. 
You know, and my kids are cool, so they would never listen to that shit. <laughs> but um, I mean, I just, I just don't understand. I mean, but I guess it's huge. I mean, I guess with, with uh, the voice um, having, I mean, what's his name on there? I can't even remember it. Blake um, Shelton. Blake Shelton. I mean, I guess, I guess he's a big country singer. I had no idea. The last country singer, the last big country singer I ever heard of, his name was Garth Brooks. <laughs> I also heard of Gareth Brooks and right. Passing. I mean, and and that's what fifteen years ago since he has you know since he retired and I didn't realize that country was still around. I mean, country was like to me, country was like the poor man's rap. Yeah. See, but you know the thing about it though is it has all to do with like how much you listen to something. It's it's all of a sudden like okay, you know in in like real life when you you buy a new car and all of a sudden you fucking see that car everywhere. It's like the same thing, like with the music you're listening to. You don't realize how prevalent something is until you're listening to it. Well, you know, like I, I, I gave zero fucks about punk rock until I got into it, and it's this whole underground culture. So it's kind of, I think it's kind of similar to the country music. I, until I listened to country music, I didn't like it at all. And then actually, um, Latuzak and I, our brother Jordan, got me into country music because he was working for some hillbillies and he was listening to it every day while he was nailing his fucking nails on the boards. He was a carpenter, and uh, if you couldn't tell by my <laughs> By my wonderful Wreck It Ralph fucking <laughs> analogy, um, but uh, but yeah, that's kind of that's what got me into it. Was jacking off a midget, but whatever. But you're right though, like <laughs> Country Thunder and all this stuff now, like it's it, it gets crazy, man. It's all the shit I see on Facebook all the time. It's like, woo, we're going to Country Thunder to Well, I mean, if, I, if if I was going to Country Thunder, it'd be to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to slit your wrist, yeah, exactly. <laughs> You know, and the, and the thing is, too, is that uh, I dislike country music for a good portion of my life, and I'm still not a, a, a big fan of it by any means, but there's a, a lot of these different... Uh, I, I do, unfortunately, have to listen to the radio uh, from time to time, and my wife also, she, she enjoys country music, and uh, although I don't really, per se, like any of it in particular, there is a lot of it that's uh, kind of uh, pop rock stars are kind of crossing over doing a song with a country star or maybe um, doing an album that is a little more geared towards you know a country sound and it just seems like it is it's it's the, it's the hip cool thing now it's you know all of a sudden it's it's more prevalent and mainstream than I guess it was uh, 10 15 20 years ago so it's having its five yeah. minutes in the sun yeah, it is you know <laughs> so. yeah well let it have its five minutes I mean cause she's telling me that oh yeah they played it at school all the time and blah 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 oh, and, shit. I'm like, so. and I mean and, you know, she goes to school in um, right near you guys, you know, right by the old, uh, you know, Miguel's. <laughs> oh, okay, in that area. Okay. Yeah. Um, as, as vague as that is, I, I, I think I understand. <laughs> well, I mean, um, I, knew, I, knew, I knew you'd understand, but, you know. But, uh, oh, what the fuck was I going to say? Uh, <laughs> we were talking about earlier. Well, my, well, pocket, my, my brain, my blackouts. I mean, I was having this conversation with my boss actually like a few months ago, and I think it has to do with, um, you know, when when rap first started, it was a lot of swearing, a lot of like derogatory stuff, and then once they started to go more towards like, I love her, or they started to like edit it more, it started to get more mainstream, top 40. Country, I mean, if you're talking like Tim McGraw, Garth Brooks, it is just depressing stuff, you know, like everyone's like, you know, Girlfriend left me. I got no money, and now it's yeah, just like my the pickup worst. broke down. <laughs> and everything's happy now. If you if you notice, like every single country song has become happy and about love and successful love. And I think yeah. That's now it's like hit top forty because it's like, oh, it's positive. It's not like, oh, my well, girlfriend cheated on me with my brother. How about you know? Red Solo Cup? Good song about drinking out of a Red Solo Cup. I've drank out of a red solo cup once or twice in my fucking my days on this earth. I think those are the only country songs I really like are the ones about drinking. Uh, so some of them are fun. You know, you know the thing is like that fun. I I've come to notice about certain musical styles too is it's all about like some shit's more palatable to people than others. You know, it just it depends on what you're looking for in it. But like with country music, like you were saying, Tim, it's funny because like. Um, Punk rock came into like, do you guys remember a few years ago, like Fall Out Boy? Like it was all pop punk, but even some screamo shit got onto like it was like when TRL was still relevant and MTV and shit. And it's just it's <laughs> TRL like or fucking years. Carson Daly. He's like, I'm, I'm a hipster and I've got one black fingernail and I think I'm cool, but I'm kind of douchey. Um, I remember fucking racing home from school to watch <laughs> now TRL. Now he just looks before, creepy. Before the internet, kind of voice. He's like super old. 
But yeah, even, <laughs> even like, like, like it just looks like a retired pedophile. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyway. Even awkward genres have made it into the, into the spotlight for a little bit. So I think sometimes just like the industry is just like, hey, we've been fucking. We've been churning the same shit. We've been shoveling the same shit around for the past five years. It seems like it comes back around in cycles because, like, when I was in high school, so, you know, 20 years ago now, a few buddies of mine, um, you know, formed a band, and they were like, oh, punk is great, man, because of Rancid. Jumpsuit uh, Midget. And uh, yeah, they had yeah the band Jumpsuit Midget uh, that they put together, and uh, but they liked the you know bands like uh, Mighty Mighty Boston's Rancid, and, and they considered that to be punk. And uh, me, you know, coming from a background where I listened to a lot of hard rock and heavy metal, um, you know, heavy metal was like Glenn, Glenn Danzig stuff back from the days when it was the Misfits and everything. You know, it was uh, it's a lot of the heavy metal actually evolved from punk, you know, and, uh, yeah. and vice versa. So so to me that that stuff was a joke, and then from there it evolved, and, and then. Ten years ago, then it was a more of a mainstream poppy, you know, type of punk, and it had just kind of, you know, evolved into again something that was more. Yeah, no, it's almost masses, fucking, you know? it's almost so, unlistenable. Like when I listen to that shit from joke. Pete Wentz, I'm just like, oh my god. Pete Pete Wentz writes the lyrics for Fall Out Boy for our viewers who don't know, and it's just like, come on. There's what bothers me. Here, here's okay, and I'll and I'll get off my fucking rant about here, <laughs> about punk rock. <laughs> Uh, my my roots, aside from heavy metal, because that's what I grew up listening to a lot. But when I really got into music and became a musician, it was all about punk rock. And so I used to have this thing about like, there's things that are like real music. There's real punk rock, you know, you know, the Descendants, Black Flag, like whatever, you know, the Sex Pistols. Um, and then there's like, then there's shit that's not real music. And I've I've kind of fallen out of that. But the the thing about punk rock that always bothered me is like, there was one or two guys who were pioneers that was, sort of became voices for the way like lyrical motifs and styles were, were made. And then there's like all this this herd of people who just try to copy that shit, and it fucking drives me insane. And I feel like Pete Wentz is one of those fucking posers that's sitting there like, how could I sound clever and witty in a punk rock way? You know, like, I just, I can't, I can't stand that Play shit, some so. Slayer! It bothers me, because, like, some of their, some of their earlier stuff, too, like, you know, I enjoyed some of their earlier albums, but it's just, I don't know, I don't know the guy, I really, I really shouldn't have such a, a, an opinion on it, but <laughs> you see him in interviews, like, I've, I've, I know guys and bands that have played with him, they're from our area in Chicagoland, we were on the scene in, in the same time frame, so... I don't know. It's just like between hearing stories, reading, and watching interviews, you kind of get impressions of people. I know that's wrong, but it just to me it comes through in the fucking music, and really, it really bothers me. So yeah, but yeah. I mean, look at his taste. Did he marry the ugly, Je the ugly Simpson out of the two? I don't know. <laughs> did he? Well, like he married. Did he marry Ashley Simpson, Jessica Simpson's sister? And she's like the. I've seen better heads come out of zippers. Sure. Yeah, but it, yeah, but it, have you seen Jessica recently? My wife yeah. watches this fashion star, and oh my god, she looks like she ate a couple of people. I mean, she seriously, <laughs> she is. Wow. She got pregnant again. I, I don't care if she's pregnant or not. She's like Pillsbury Doughboy to shame, you know. The Pillsbury Doughboy looks at her and goes, you know, my god, that, that bitch is fat, you know. I mean, she's big. <laughs> it's so the sad when the spotlight. Pan, the, no, but the camera has to pan across, and I don't care if the camera adds ten pounds to a normal person. To her, it adds about, you know. 85 three, three people that's three people <laughs> see but i feel for though because i got fat for a while like uh, i was always like so yeah but not skinny. that fat man there's like two of you <laughs> but still yeah. like i don't know I, I i just feel i guess i feel bad for shit like that i don't feel like, bad because she's still capitalizing on her little bit of the fame that she had in the spotlight 10 years ago and is that and tuna or is that chicken and she's still whoring herself out anyway and now just on this fashion star show and she's still collecting money and having all you can eat buffets delivered all the time so it isn't like she went into hiding and became fat you know what I mean right she's, but she's fucking still, still wouldn't you be she 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 hibernated for a while yeah, you know I would milk it too but I'm just saying she's a public slob she deserves none of your, your pity whatsoever because you know she got that way and she's still putting herself in front of millions of people every day that way. So it's like she's aware, you know what I mean? Yeah, so but does that mean she's her. somehow responsible to the people? Like, all she's accountable for is for herself, regardless she's a public image. Like, I, I don't agree with that. Like, that because we think that she should be skinny, she has to be skinny. I think that's... No, not that we think she should be skinny. I'm just saying she's just, uh, she's just a, a big, burly woman. And from somebody who went, you know, from someone who was, uh, you know, had, had a nicer figure, you know what I mean, was a little more on the voluptuous side, though, to, to that, that's just... Like I said, that that's just a, a gross misuse of you know food. You know, all you can eat buffet. <laughs> it really is. There's I did get pretty big though. I got. Yeah. I went. I went from gosh, like like one eighty five, one eighty eight, like one ninety tops to like two twenty three, like pretty pretty quick. And so I was. Uh, 
You know what? I was going to do a video about this. Maybe I'll do, I'll do a video about this, but uh, about maybe like my experience with with weight loss and HCG and shit because of all the propaganda crap that's out there. But uh, but yeah, I, I got a little chubby and I kind of liked it though. Like everyone gave me a lot of shit for getting fat, but like I li I liked being fat. Like you're very, what? You get very intimidating. When I'm fat, I'm intimidating. In general, <laughs> or are you just saying that in general? In general. In general. Hey, it's, you know what? I mean, true. when 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 I was married, I was up to uh. A good 220, and uh, you know I'm about 180, 185 now. And I was a, I, mean, I wouldn't say I was huge, but you know I mean, I think that you know I had a dicky do where my belly stick out further than my dicky do. <laughs> so not a booty do. <laughs> no. Yeah, I was. Uh, I think actually about a month and a half ago, before we started working out, I went into the doctor for something. They weigh in everything, you know. And I, of course, had my clothes and shoes on and everything like that. But uh, I was, I was uh, two and a quarter, you know. And I was like, "Ooh, boy, that's a little heavy." I was about, <laughs> I was about a buck eighty-five all throughout high school, you know. And I'd be lifting and you know doing all kinds of different things. I want to get to two hundred. I want to get to two hundred, you know. And then I stopped working out. Uh, I don't know, about 10 years ago, probably somewhere in that neighborhood. And then I quit smoking about seven years ago, started eating some home cooking and everything, you know, and I got up to 200 and surpassed it, but not in a good way, you know. Sitting here with a so, bunch of lightweights, I'll tell you what. But uh, <laughs> so we're working out now, man, you know, and so not, and I've dropped a few pounds and, you know, I, I feel a little better. I got more energy now running around after the kids, so that's always a good thing. It's amazing how that shit re-energizes you. That's the truth, though, you know what I mean? Because I'm running around after a 15-month-old, and, I mean, he's just – He's like the Energizer Bunny never stops, and you know it used to be after a couple minutes, I'd be like, "All right," and I kind of wind him down. And you know, today I was I was all over the place with him for <laughs> for a while, you know. So I tired him out. <laughs> so I'm gonna share this story time, <laughs> just because I think it's so funny. It makes me laugh so hard. Is I'm I'm sitting here and I'm like trying to pay attention to the conversation for the, the our viewers out there who don't know me. Um, I I'm the worst multitasker in the whole world. I can't I can't do many things at once. And so I'm sitting here trying to listen to the conversation. I get this text, and I look down, and I shank. He goes, <laughs> goes, dude, I have to keep switching screens to whoever is talking. <laughs> Which I experienced my first week, too. So I had to tell him to click on the highlighted box, and it will go away. And I get this text back. It just says, sweet. I thought it just automatically switches to well, it talking. does. It does. Until you click on someone. When he did oh. the intros, what it does it gives you a blue highlight box around each name <laughs> um, and then if you don't click that name it doesn't matter if you double click it if you click on yourself click off the screen it keeps that person on and I had like a mini moment of panic in our first overdose that you guys weren't aware of at all where I was just clicking aimlessly for like what felt like a half hour <laughs> until I fucking figured it out but I just, well, just, just thought I would share that I'm was just fucking I'm sitting here and I'm like I'm viewing it and I'm like okay um the two six talking, but I'm still looking at surf dub. I'm like, that's not cool. So then I'm like, more uh, in here. What's going on? I'm like, okay, I'm gonna sit here and click. I'm like, maybe maybe it'll go away. And I'm clicking all throughout the screen. Nothing's fucking working. And then I'm like, it's like I'm a moment of panic, something. right? Because you're sitting there thinking you're gonna be responsible for clicking on whoever's fucking talking. Well, yeah, it's like it's like it's like there's gonna be an hour and a half for two hours of just just Latuzak. Just, just Latuzak. I mean, that's it. Because that's what it was on. So did you first, suddenly? Did you suddenly have more respect for me, thinking that I did that all along? Yes, I did. I was like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> that be a lot of work. How oh the my fuck God. am I going to enjoy a beer if I have to sit here and pay attention to who the fuck's talking? It all, it all See, makes but, a lot of sense, though, now that you've explained that, uh, Surf, because a couple minutes leading up to that, every time I saw a shot on the screen, man, he was just like, he just had this look of anxiety. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't the normal, casual, like, like you know, it was just like. I'm sitting here. You just see like a look of concern wash over his face, you know. <laughs> yeah, when you rewatch it, you'll just just stare at me and be like, "Yeah, he's fucking worried." He has no you know idea what's funny though? I shouldn't have responded to the text. I should have let it go, <laughs> and then and, shit. and then I should have waited like a week because you would have you would have rewatched every overdose and looked at every transition with the voices, and you'd be like, "Damn, dude, Joe's pretty fucking good at this." It's <laughs> great, like seriously, like straight up, like Tim farted and he just switched. Yeah, I'd be getting fucking texts and shit. That'd be fucking great. But uh, all, right. all right, all right. Are we ready for a new topic? Let's yeah. do it. All right. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we talk about uh, the Book of Mormons? Oh God. <laughs> Uh, like the actual Book of Mormon, Mormons or the 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 play? I well, almost yeah, said I mean, Mer honestly, if, if, we're, if, if we're if we're really going to talk about the Book of Mormons, I bet 
I better go ahead and pull something up real quick because <laughs> I better get the fucking the Asian monkey porn off and start getting something up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, so uh, uh, yeah, so uh, Yellow Bus, I know you probably I have a lot to talk that's about. That's my cue then. So um, for all the viewers out there, do we have a count of viewers? Can we check viewer count real quick? Uh, I don't have that. Is it the host or? Hostess with the mostess. So anyway, 15. Okay, so for you viewers out there, uh, I went home for the weekend for an extended period, um, and uh, I went and saw the play, the Broadway in Chicago play, Book of Mormon. And so for those of you who don't know it, it's a South Park, uh, the creators of South Park made a Broadway play um, of the Book of Mormon. It's in their own rendition of... Uh, of Mormons and it plays a little uh, satirical work. Um, they actually get sent over to Africa for their mission. And uh, I went on and uh, I got some tickets and I got, you know, it's like $90 for the nosebleeds and then I got the better tickets and I was actually the, the second row back from the front, uh, pretty much breathing down the, the maestro's neck because it's an underground orchestra. And the guy from Pitch Perfect, um, I don't know if you guys have seen it. Any of you guys seen it at all or no? Pitch Perfect? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that shit. Yeah, so you know the, not the main character, but like the roommate in college? Yeah. He was, yeah, yeah. The, he was the main guy. So um, so there's actually like a, a up-and-coming celebrity on the, the Broadway uh, musical. And this kid's just funny as hell. He's kind of like a skinnier Chris Farley. And... Uh, He's just like crazy. He's like sweating, and the juke curls are flapping around, and uh, <laughs> he's like sweating and spitting. And as he's singing and spitting, like I can feel it hitting my face. I'm so close. Oh, and I see. The, That's what you pay the extra money for, right there. Give you a poncho. The you know, I'm not going to do any spoilers. I, I recommend go go downtown, go see it. Um, I know why they don't have it on the West Coast, so that's why I had to fly back. <laughs> but uh, no, it was a it was a good time, and I mean the story was like if you put like the best episodes of South Park together, and that's pretty much what it was. It was like a real life South Park episode with the same, uh, you know, the the same comedy, and you know, overall like I thought it was gonna be kind of like only we our generation would get it, but uh, you know. I went with a girlfriend, Christy. I look over to the left. There's a 50-year-old woman laughing way louder than me. I look over to my right, and Christy's sitting next to, like, a 65-year-old woman who's, like, shipping, sipping champagne and, like, spitting it out of her mouth because it's, like, this one scene, like, it's just so ridiculous. Uh, just a little spoiler. There's a little, like, musical part, and uh, <laughs> I don't know if you guys know any of the religion, but, uh, you know, if you've ever met a Mormon, it's kind of, like, dead on for me at least and it's like <laughs> they're talking about like this one kid has like these homosexual tendencies and they're like doo -doo 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 -doo, just turn it off and then they take like a <laughs> flat like the flashlight or the light of you know when you're at home and just click just turn it off you know doo -doo -doo -doo, turn it off. and then the kid's like you see daddy beady mommy just turn it off <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps going, and everyone has like their own little thing. But I thought it was so funny. Like, <laughs> uh, that's funny shit. <laughs> typical. Too. I was but, wondering uh, how it was gonna be because you know, obviously, like Trey Parker and Matt Stone are pretty. You know, people would say toilet humor. I think they're brilliant. I was gonna make a video about that too. But uh, what? How does it compare to like the humor on, on South Park? Is it's not as raunchy, right? Well, it's pretty. I mean, it's pretty dead on. Um, I mean. They they say a bunch of stuff very similar to South Park. They're they're very careful not to go too far, I guess. And they do the thing on South Park where, where it's like, oh, we made fun of this shit for like twenty minutes, and then we're gonna like have like a five minute wrap up where we kind of like redeem ourselves, kind of. But <laughs> it's like the we the kind of say of sorry, story, but up. we don't actually say sorry. And it's like the moral of the story: wrap it up, and everyone's still laughing. And, yeah. Um. You know, it's 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 definitely like uh, it's a two and a half hour South Park episode. And it's worth every penny, and it's just it's just the funniest thing ever. And uh, just to see like people from different generations actually laugh and like just let loose, it's just incredible. I love that. I want to go check it out for sure. But I, I that wrap up thing is so funny. You mentioned that because it's so. 
the fuck is going on <laughs> is characteristic of those two. They, I think they have so many like, like yeah, you're right, it is. Sperm. Just just burp it out, burp it out. <laughs> they have so many nuggets of like true gold for a second, like touching moments on South Park for a second. You're like, yeah, we fucking we shouldn't do that to each other, you know? <laughs> you're like, and it's like in this obviously really fucked up context, but I just, I think it's really funny. I've always thought that what they do is, like, totally unique, and these guys give zero fucks about anything. Have you guys seen the, uh, like, the, the thing on uh, Netflix, uh, Yellow Bus? I think you did, right? Oh, uh, the making of an episode? Yeah, yeah, the making of an episode. Thing. Yeah. That thing was brilliant to watch, man. Yeah, it was, it was actually, it was really, it was really good to watch because you don't realize that, you know, they're, during the, the year, they're not, like, Producing, 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 and have like all the episodes set up. Like they just fucking, they just kick it, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Oh shit, the season started!" And they like work six <laughs> days a week straight, and then they pass out for a day, and then they wake up and just work six more days, and then, you know, once they're done with the season, then they're like, "Oh, well, now we can finally rest and do other stuff." And, and they've been doing that shit now for what fifteen, sixteen years or I think something. So. I think and so. I mean, the great yeah. thing is, is that they always go and throw in, uh, you know, relevant things that are are happening now, you know, that are funny yeah. now, that are good to make fun of right now. And uh, so that makes sense, you know, on, on how they do things, and they don't do it months out in advance like many, you know, different shows do uh, as far as their scripting and writing and, and developing and everything. But, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing to me because I'll still go and flip on Comedy Central and, and see, you know, newer seasons, and I haven't watched it, uh, you know, habitually since probably the fourth or fifth season. You know, I just kind of trailed off on it. But they're always still funny and entertaining. <laughs> so, you know, oh, yeah. and it's really neat to see that these guys went and put something on, on a Broadway <laughs> and it's successful now, you know, to a, a kind of a, a mainstream audience and, and even it's kind of a snobbier crowd, you know, if you think. It's won it. awards and shit. I think that's yeah, fucking fantastic. It's the amazing part about it, you know. So I think I'm going to check that out too. We should grab tickets and uh, and take our suggestions. I think if you get them early enough, they're like $80. And it's, I mean, I don't think any season is really that bad. But the, you know, even from Christy, I mean, she she's seen she's seen Wicked. I think she's seen Beauty and the Beast. I mean, this is I mean, she also likes South Park, but you know, so there's a little bias. But she she likes it. She's like, hey, look. To be honest, I love the Wizard of Oz. I love seeing Wicked, but no story has had me that like enthralled with something since this. Like the story is actually genuine. Like it is it is a good story. That's awesome, then, because all I saw was the commercials for it, and I kind of thought, yeah, I don't know, what are these guys up to, you know, is, is this going to be any good, and uh, just, you know, kind of let it go there, because uh, I'm not a, a regular theater goer, I guess you'd say, for the, um, you know, the plays and things like that, so I have nothing against them, it's just, you know, most of them take place downtown, and, you know, usually finding an evening to get away uh, downtown and have somebody watch our three kids is, yeah. is next to impossible. So we just kind of are not in the habit of doing it, I guess. You it's know? crazy how satisfying it is, though, when you um, when you find, like, a good live theater. Like, because I hadn't watched much either. And actually, um, um, the, com the company my wife, my wife and I own, we work with another company, and they're a group of, of kids that do theater. And we went to go see one of their shows once. And... Uh, I was like, you know, we go to a lot of events for a lot of students and causes, and, and we were just kind of getting to know these people. And I thought, okay, great, well, kids theater, I mean, you know, when is this fucking two hours going to be over? I mean, I don't mean to sound callous, but it was just, you know, whatever. I wasn't looking forward to it, not for any particular reason, but just because I, I, I thought it was going to be what you expect from kids theater, you know, to be kind of lackluster. But they were incredible. They were incredible. They, they, they sang so well. They danced so well. They acted so well. It seemed really natural. It didn't... Like, I have this thing where if I feel, like, even a little bit of hesitation from the performers, I'll be like, he's going to fuck up a line. He's going to fuck up a line. He's going to fuck up a line. And I'll keep, like, waiting with this tense energy until they flub a line. And then I'm like, aha, you know? But, like, I didn't have any of that with this. And, like, the experience was so gratifying because they they, they all knew how to, to do their jobs well. And I think it's awesome to see when you get to see, like, truly talented people perform live and not, like, you know, a pop star. <laughs> Hey, so. Britney Spears and Justin Bieber are great in concert. God damn it! Some of them are really talented. I just I have a hard time with like the the voice as an instrument is a great thing, but like when it's just like oh let's we'll hit play here we'll have some guy up there pretending like he's scratching tracks, and I'll just fucking you know Celine Lip Dion and Whitney Houston to it whatever fine like you can sing and that's great and and like I'm not putting down that talent but I just feel like the musicality grows so much when you demonstrate your knowledge of of another instrument aside from just voice, you know. Look at how much Justin Timberlake blew up once he fucking was doing his thing on tour, playing guitar and shit, and fuck, and and doing some other things. He he blew up twice as big as he ever was with NSYNC. 
I mean, maybe that's maybe that's being a little exaggerative. <laughs> well, no, but, it's really uh, not because think about it. I mean, you know, you're in sync. You're with what four or five guys, and you know, you're, you know, when you go by yourself, you're, uh, you're honestly w with the group being overshadowed. I mean, if you're the talent, you know, because I mean, think about it. Always, it's like anything. You know, you got a group, and there's always that standout person, and that was him with sync. You know, he stood out. He went ahead, did music, movies, and. Uh, you know, All the girls so. want to suck his dick. Yeah, him and his little fro, they want to suck his dick. That's kind of how, like, the Beatles were. Like, <laughs> don't get me wrong, like, I'm going to offend a lot of people by saying this, but, like, the Beatles were, like, essentially the first boy band. Like, they were talented. They did a lot of incredible things for their generation. They said a lot of things that hadn't been said. They did a lot of unique things. Um, they brought a, a lot of new things to the musical table. But by and large, they weren't the first who were doing it. There was many other bands that were lesser known that were doing similar things. And they're just, by and large, overcredited. I don't think any any artist, this isn't exclusive to the Beatles, should be dubbed like the greatest of all time. Like that's it's just so over the top with the Beatles. It's like what about Kanye? all of the, the, the oh my god, it's even worse. I can't even get me started on that. But it's like yeah. look, look at all the footage from like the live concerts. There's like girls like orgasming and passing out and guys looking there like you know, fucking totally bored. So I don't know. That's just my impression of it. But I think uh, you could do per genre, you could do greatest artist per genre. Yeah, you're probably right. They're probably our greatest artist per genre, but I mean, I have nothing against the Beatles. I just personally don't give a rat's ass about them. <laughs> I mean, just honestly, I mean, it's not it's not something for me. You know, the day the day rev revolutionized something and you know changed things. Yeah, and at the time they were. You know, so was Elvis. Seriously, I mean, well, you go and so was Tupac, and so yeah, was. So I mean, you can just keep it going. That's my whole point. Is that like? It's, it seems like all of the music community unanimously agrees that if you had to pick one, it would fucking be the Beatles. And it's just it's just frustrating because when the populace all believe something, it must be true. <laughs> well, everything on the internet is true. Yeah. Exactly. Who, as soon as we can't believe in the internet, when that day comes, we need to fucking... It's Armageddon. It's Walking Dead. <laughs> um, all right, new topic. Let's talk about... Um, hmm... Uh, Ooh, the competitive reality shows thing. Are competitive reality shows completely rigged? Like, uh, what were some of the examples? What American Idol, The Voice, etc. Yeah, that that was that was mine. And the reason I brought that up is because a few few years ago, my wife got me into watching a season of Dancing with the Stars. You know, and it was fairly entertaining, only because I really didn't know a lot about uh, dance and the different styles and stuff like that. However, the show once they get to a certain point is supposed to be determined by the people actually voting, you know, and in my mind, it really wasn't, I, I think personally the shows are rigged, you know, the voice, all those things. Agreed. I think your voice, I think your vote doesn't count. I think it, there's, there's a group of people that sit around and they go, listen, this person is better looking. This person uh, is going to draw more viewers. This person has more of a following. They're going to make the cut this week. Simple as that, you know. So I believe that, you know, these people that are just massively obsessed, and you always see when The Voice or American Idol, I see on Facebook all the time, oh, they shouldn't have kicked Rudy off. Rudy was so good. <laughs> fuck Rudy. Seriously, I don't give a fuck about Rudy, okay? He probably sucked anyway, but the point was that he didn't, you know, he seriously, he didn't go and, you know, and suck the right, uh, you know, wiener in the back there, and that's what, a lot of what it is. It's, I, I think it's a popularity contest, and... Uh, you know, and I think it's it's total bullshit. And I think the reason that I, I really wanted to know what other people's opinions were is because sometimes uh, when my wife and I talk, she just sort of listens to my opinion, and she doesn't agree nor disagree, <laughs> and doesn't really even give her own opinion. So I have no idea if you know what I mean. If I, I'm crazy, being the only one out there thinking, I just know that uh, she spends hours of her her day, and she'll she'll get upset. You know, she'll, I can't believe I'm not watching it anymore. I was for team this, but then they kicked this. <laughs> Person. Well, this person got bought, you know, and I'm like, really, seriously, you know. Uh, I think you're onto something, know. Jim. But I think it's 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 not okay. So when you say popularity, I agree with that. But I might be agreeing with the fact that it all comes down to they they get people that are relatable to a crowd. They don't really know exactly what that crowd is for that season. Uh, they have like a base age group, maybe maybe like a a race or maybe a social economic class. But right. it comes but, down but to it, like, but it develops, you know what I mean, as the season goes along. I think, you know what I mean. Yeah. And you, know, you got to have your token ethnicity. You got to have your black mm -hmm. guy. You got to have your Latino, whatever. You know what I mean. That goes pretty far into there. It just that's a new. You should coin that new phrase, token ethnicity. It's like insert <laughs> ethnic group well, here. You need a, I mean, they they do. They they play this meta game to where they're like, 
what do we think that these people like, and we need to predict it, and we need to pull it off before, you know, they can... And I wonder know, how much they stuff. can predict and trend that through social media, too, because all these people have Facebook pages, all these people have Twitter yeah. accounts, all these people have websites, uh, nearly all of them, so... And, and I who's got the most pathetic cry-for-me feel-good story, you know? Yeah, exactly. My family was lost in this, I, I knew somebody who was a victim of this tragedy, you know, I grew up homeless, and my daddy beat me and you know what I mean so whatever type of good story they can pull up for the dramatic end of it too Turn and, it I, off. and then I think they see what the what the crowd's relating to and what's going to get them the best ratings and then I think ultimately that's how they they kind of push people along you know through the show I think so the, it's not based on talent the celebrity ones are probably more rigged than the the user or watching viewer why do you think participant that? ones just cuz like the those ones they could either, if you want to pay to get through, I mean, maybe a celebrity will just tip someone, you know, some money, and you know, if they want to make it all the way through, or they could talk to the celebrities about it, and they'll act out what they want to happen on the show. Yeah, I think there's probably a lot of varying degrees of like, of likeliness for something to be rigged or not, because isn't there? I, I actually I heard about this in PKA. They were talking about like a. A park, a show about like like parking wars or something. It wasn't parking wars, but it was Story some. It was storage wars. Storage wars, and there was one else about like a, a parking, uh, like a, a ticket writing. Yeah, it's about how the whole thing was staged. And, and, and like, but the thing was, it wasn't debated. Like, it was actually confirmed. Like, it's oh, yeah. you can go and read about it. That like, they they make up these people to ticket and and do it in a parking lot and like, it's completely like 100% fictional like it, it's it's not like speculation it's I guess it's like well-known fact mm -hmm. so I, I wonder how much of that stuff is like if we just fucking did some research it's like yeah it turns out this thing is fucking totally rigged and and they're being honest well, about I, it. nobody's there reading it yeah I mean those shows I look at almost in a different class even though they're technically reality shows I you know I, I, I think that they put together and they kind of you know construe and make up some of the stories and push some of the drama and blow things up on, on those type of shows because you're trying to carry the story on you know but um, you know with the supposed you know viewership reality shows that are uh, you know supposedly your vote makes or breaks you know whether this contestant moves on and uh, that you know that that's the thing that I, I don't buy into. I don't think it. I don't yeah, think it matters right. at all. You know, <laughs> I really don't. Well, of course it doesn't. Of course it really doesn't matter because you got to always think is, uh, you know, what's going to sell. I mean, the fact is, American Idol, The Voice, ultimately they're going to get what a record deal, and what's a record deal? I mean, a, a record company's not going to sign, you know, Joe Blow, homeless person on the corner and say, hey, you got no teeth and you look like shit. Let's go ahead and put on an album with you because you're not going to sell dick. The what do you guys? Is, what do you? guys think about ticket prices for these events you said you mentioned the record label and like the you know these to come to go see these people like uh, that that was something that was brought up earlier i think was like oh, are, yeah. are performers or not not performers but are tickets to these events um completely absurd for what they're asking yeah well, i think that was another one that I, yeah that i had put up and I, and I just i lumped everything in their sporting events as well because you know to go see a chicago bears game i mean i pretty much would have to sell one of my kids and you know and, <laughs> and, and probably still be in debt for a while you know and it's the same thing with the you know the concerts and stuff like that you know i mean when i was uh, and i know that you know this was 15 20 years ago when i was in high school going to concerts but i mean you could go see um just about anybody for you know like a general admission show for 20 30 bucks then i mean now i don't care who it is that comes around you can't usually touch a ticket even on a, on the lawn you know at places uh you know for under 50 60 70 bucks you know and um I don't know. Like I said, I, I just think it's a little bit crazy and unaffordable, and um, especially yeah. in, especially with music. You know what I mean? You think, oh my God, it's half these performers. You got you got the has-beens that are coming out of retirement. You got you know bands like the Eagles and Kiss that are still going on tour, and they're in their fifties and sixties. And it's like, really, how much do you have left in the tank? You know what I mean? Or is this just a cheap cash grab? You know, and then you've got uh, a lot of the mainstream, you know, pop, hip hop, you know, whatever's popular on the radio now, and I mean, honestly, I mean, even if one of my kids likes them, am I going to pay all that money to go see and hear them play a couple of songs they heard on the radio, you know? See, and like uh, I said, too, like, if I if I was riding that gravy train, I'd fucking ride near the ground. But if I was, like, one of those old prehistoric musicians, I think I'd at least try and have the common decency to, like, drive ticket prices down. I think Kid Rock. Is it Kid Rock? I just saw an article about someone. It was an, an artist that said, like, I think it's called like the Feel Good Summer Tour. Some it's it's basically the whole idea is that you. I think it's like fifteen or twenty bucks a ticket or something. It's like something ridiculously cheap to go see Kid nice. Rock. 
but he said the whole the, his whole point was just that like it's too expensive to go to a show and just have a good time. You're paying six bucks, seven bucks a beer and shit or whatever, you know. Well, yeah, and that, yeah, that's the other, yeah, that's the other part of it. And six, seven bucks. I don't even. When I went to last big show, I went to is uh, Ozzy uh, did an Ozfest back in 2007, and um, it was free. Is uh, if you bought his uh, his album for ten or twelve bucks, uh, you got a voucher for two tickets. And I wound up, uh, my wife and I went and saw him for the Ozfest, and I don't know, I think we're probably like the twelfth row at Tinley Park, you know, or whatever the hell they're calling it now. And, you know, but I mean, it, it was crazy because the tickets were free, but we got jacked for like 20, 25 bucks for parking. And this is 2007. This is six years ago now, five, six summers ago. And beers were like nine, nine and a half dollars a piece for like Bud Lights. You yeah, know, it's crazy, man. I mean, it was insane. I mean, I literally blew like 200 bucks on beer and parking. It's tall boys, you know? though. So, well, yeah, but I mean, they're still <laughs> watered down and, you know, it tastes like, it tastes like a whole boy's piss. And but, still, my, my whole thing is for nine or 10 bucks when I'm rolling three tall boys deep, I'm feeling like me thinks that 30 bucks was not a wise investment. I'm like, fuck, <laughs> because now I'm outside, I'm fucking sweating, it's hot out, and the beer is just going right fucking, it's, it's not doing anything. Oh, yeah. so, especially for a long, like an all day festival type thing like that. I mean, we showed up, uh, you know, I think we showed up like three, four o'clock and, you know, just caught, I don't know, maybe, you know, five, six bands or whatever. But I mean, they, they were going on for like 10 in the morning, you know, and, and we yeah. went to a couple of those uh, before uh, when you were younger. And I mean, it, it seems like a great idea, but man, you know, 10, the same thing is how little the eat. artists get too. like out of that some like, you know, artists don't a lot for our viewers out there. Artists don't make their money from selling records by and large. Um, they make it from gigging and playing shows. And then the reverse can be said too, if you're on a really good record label, that you're making all of your money from albums and that you make no money gigging. But uh, it is kind of sad. Like, the, it just, it reminds me, do, do you guys remember that controversy like, I don't know, probably 10 years ago now, like when the cast of Friends all demanded a million dollars each an episode and everyone thought that was outrageous? Uh, yeah, I, I do remember hearing about that. I was like, are you kidding me? They get paid a million dollars an episode? Holy shit. <laughs> you know, and some of the people had a problem with it too because it was competing with Seinfeld and they didn't like that. <laughs> uh, if I could click on Yellow Bus, I would. But uh, uh, but anyways, though, so, um, I, I, I would click on it, but then it'll be all screwed up for the rest of the episode. <laughs> so I, I read uh, I read the figures on this once, and like in syndication and ad revenue and shit, it was generating like dub, double high double digit like millions, like 60, 70 million, you know, per episode. And they're the cast of the show, and so. Six six million out of that, you know, one tenth is going to go to the performers. That is one of the most successful um, cases in, in history, and it's still one tenth of the total sum of like Friends is not possible without the actors. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can say that about the production staff, but you can there's you, you're never going to have a shortage of eager, of eager people to work on it. Yeah, they're they're replaceable. I mean, you may have a couple of key writers or something like that, but uh, you know, and, and you take care of those. People, but for the most part, yeah, all that background staff is is replaceable. You so know, I'm just so. always shocked by it because people, you know, it's just a matter of perception. If you don't know, if you if you don't know the industry well, it sounds crazy. You go fucking million dollars a piece. How how crazy selfish is that? Well, it turns out you, they're actually still getting pretty jipped, you know. So um, if yeah. you look at it that way, so it's just another way to look at it. You also got the show that the band's going to put on too, because I would go see Iron Maiden anytime they're in town. They put on an awesome show. I haven't. I saw them years ago, about twenty years ago, with uh, when Bruce Dickinson was still with them, and then He's still uh, with them. Well, I know. And then, well, he left for a while. Oh yeah. And then there was another singer for a number of years, and uh, and Dickinson went off and, and did his own project or whatever, and then uh, and then came back, and uh, several years ago, I heard now. So and then is back on tour with them. So yeah, they put on a great show though. A lot of energy, man. A lot of fun. Oh yeah, he's running around so. stage the whole hour and a half or however long they play. <laughs> It's crazy, dude. Like, people don't realize how much goes into performing. Like, sometimes I'll rewatch a video I just filmed where I was playing drums or something. I'm like, after I was done filming, I remember my heart rate being up and I was, like, sweating. And it looks in the video like I'm just, like, bored as fuck. <laughs> it's just, like, it's crazy. When you're put on a crazy show where you're really, like, when you're performing in front of a group and... Um, you got the spotlights on you, too. Oh, yeah, dude, those, and the yeah, stage lights, lights are so hot. Uh, That's why I, I have a lot of respect yeah. for performers like that, though, because, I mean, I had the privilege of seeing Pantera um, probably about seven times, and a couple of times when I saw him at a place downtown called the Aragon uh, Brawl Room, or Ballroom, but uh, it was a general admission place, and it was, uh, you know, I don't know, three, four, five thousand maybe it held, 
But uh, their lead singer, Phil, I mean, that guy was crazy, just the stuff that he would do. I mean, he was dripping, you know, two songs into the set. I mean, he was just dripping with sweat because of just running around and getting out of the crowd and everything else, you know. And I mean, I, I can't even imagine for the guys that, you know what I mean, that are, that are jamming on the drums and with the instruments holding the guitar and everything else, you know. It's, See, it's uh, crazy, dude. It's so. crazy. Like, I, I, remember, I remember times coming off stage and my, my now wife, Jamie, was like, for a little while I was worried about you. I was like, what, what do you mean? She's like, I could fuck it. I could tell how exhausted you were like in the, during that last song because you were just, you go ape shit for fucking, I mean, in most of the sense, <laughs> when you play, when you first start gigging or like half hour, maybe 45 minutes if you get lucky. But you even play 15 minute sets and shit. But uh, fucking, it's the most intense fucking 15, 30, 45 minutes of your life um, if you can make it that, you know. But uh, I don't like the whole acting and like having it up thing. But like when you can see someone's really fucking feeling what they're doing, it's just a it's a contagious energy. I, I love that about shows. Yeah, and, and I mean, and you can tell with performers too, because I've seen some great shows and I've seen some shit shows. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and, and there's there's a few bands out there that are as good live or even better than you know than, than the record sound, and you can just feel that energy you know coming yeah. from. And, and there's other ones that are just they're kind of lackluster. You know, I saw Stone Temple Pilots back when they were real popular. Um, and I saw. Them I think I saw them at Ozfest with you too, and I, I was kind of disappointed. They were all right. I saw them. Uh, they were headlining. I saw them at the UIC Pavilion, and it was. Uh, and first of all, it was a bunch of bunch of jack wannabe types. You know, um, people were crowd surfing, and when a girl would go up and crowd surf, you know, the guys were literally like trying to tear her, tear her clothes off, and you know, fondle her while she was up there. Just no respect type of thing, you know. But yet, I go to a Pantera show and get knocked down or trip in a mosh pit, and I'd have a 300-pound skinhead go and pick me up and be like, hey, you okay, brother? You know what I mean? Dust me off, turn me around, you know, make sure I was conscious, <laughs> help me up, you know. Um, but anyway, there were there was a few shows that I saw <laughs> that were, uh, you know, that, that, were, that were less than desirable, you know, and I kind of felt like I, I wanted a refund when I got out of there, you know. So. No, I think the funniest thing is when, uh, we, I think me and Christy, I brought Christy back home, like, it was probably a year ago or something, and uh, me and Jason got like New Year's Eve tickets. And then when we get really got the New Year's Eve tickets, we saw that there was like Jason Derulo playing like somewhere in Schaumburg. And Chris was like, "Oh, I'd want to see that." I'm like, "All right." It was like twenty bucks. He comes in like an hour late, and uh, instead of taking the elevator to like the second and a half floor at I think it was Barley Corn in Schaumburg, he went to like the second floor, got off, and then had to get back on because he came off on like the floor we were. <laughs> he came off on the other floor, and then he just goes. He just, he just comes out like sweating already, like drunk. He goes, "Fucking love Chicago." <laughs> we're like, "Well, you were just at Chicago. You uh, you drove to Schaumburg, and we're in Schaumburg." And he's just like, <laughs> he sang like six songs. And he's like, "Fuck it, I'm leaving." I'm like, "Wow, you and Kocheck just cost me fifty bucks." Yeah, it's like, thanks a lot, buddy. Enjoy your meth. Dude, it's like shit like that like pisses me off if I pay the money. But the only time I ever thought it was funny was when I watched Sublime shit. Brad Bradley Noel, lead singer of Sublime, was a fucking shit show. And uh, actually, Marshall Goodman, uh, one of their fill-in drummers, uh, left on tour or, or didn't want to go back out with them on the road because he was like, man, people pay good money to see our show. And Bradley would be out on the side of the stage right before we go on, drunk as fuck, screaming lyrics to N.W.A. <laughs> like... <laughs> Jesus Christ! You see footage. Just got to get up on stage, and he was just a fucking nightmare. Sometimes, like he just he couldn't even hold his guitar. He couldn't even perform, which is totally ridiculous. But it's funny to watch because yeah. when you see his other videos, when he's fucking not totally fucked up, he's incredible. He's just totally incredible. But when he doesn't give a fuck, or when he's strung out on heroin, or whatever the fuck else he was doing, it's just for some reason like it just it really strikes me as as funny when you see someone responsible for like thousands of people's entertainment that is just like I don't give a fuck it's like, a complete train wreck <laughs> yeah. it's annoying when other people do it funny when Bradley does it I don't know I just I just get that vibe from him yeah yadder hider hider oh. hodier okay who wants to pick the next topic um where the fuck did that car horn come from? <laughs> <laughs> so they're outside they're in the street. street. That was that was that was me. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I mean, I'm kind of interested in Netflix original programming, saying that uh, I've seen House of Cards, and I, I actually started getting into that weird new Twilight one with the fucking werewolf. And I always stuff. see those, but I never click on them. 
Yeah, you know what? I mean, I've watched. I haven't seen any of them, and you know they've got the Arrested Development coming out in June or July. May and, end of uh, May. End of May. Right. And the Hem, Hem, Hemlock Grove is that the one right now? Yep, that's the one with. There's like a werewolf and a vampire, and it's yeah. Really I'm, I mean, I'm really. I mean, I'm really interested in seeing it. But I mean, I've been reading that. You know, they're investing a lot of money on getting this. Uh, you know, original programming, and it's not really. I mean, they're paying to you know be the first to show it. But they're investing all this money and trying to compete with HBO and Showtime. I think I think the major thing is HBO, and it's uh, I guess it's putting a real financial uh, damper on them. Netflix. So now let me get this straight because I'm the only one here I think that doesn't have Netflix. And, and actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign up. Uh, so mark my words, I'll have it next week, uh, just just to see what it's all about. Ladies so, and gentlemen, you saw that it happened here. It's fucking live. If Lucifer doesn't committed. have it, we get to I'm fucking. Committed. It's gonna pay for a whole year and be done with it. But he's gonna have to it, watch Sean but Shannon rate, though, panda porn. So so I, so my question is is good because I don't have Netflix. Um, so there's original program like Arrested Development uh, was a great show that I enjoyed that that got cut short. Um, so they're they're making new episodes to this, and they're actually going yeah. to, to to air them on Netflix. One season they're making, which I think is going to lead up to the to the movie. But if I'm if I'm correct, correct? Okay, I believe so. Yeah, and now but now, Sean, you had mentioned that you said, "Well, they're just they're just going to air them first. So they're so they're paying for and producing these shows to air on Netflix or to have on Netflix. But then at some point, they're going to wind up airing on a network. Well, I'm they're not sure to sell the rights to a network, or are you talking like years down the road when the show reruns? Well, I'm, on, I'm sure on, at at some point they're going to end up on DVD, Blu-ray, and stuff like that. This is just their way, like you know, like I don't know what's going to happen with like the Hemlock uh, Grove and the House of Cards." Um, which House of Cards, I believe, what had Kevin Spacey in it? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, they, they, I, I actually saw. Yeah, I saw some previews for that. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it's you know, I'm assuming it's going to end up on DVD, Blu-ray, and you know, they probably get some residuals from that. I haven't really read into it. I just know that Reed Hastings, who's I believe the CEO of Netflix, uh, is really investing heavily. He's trying to really compete with HBO. And the fact is that isn't that guy a dickhead? I've just heard that. Yeah. No, I've heard lots of things about him just being a dick. You know, and but he doesn't care. I mean, he's just so you can relate. Yeah, I can. I'm, I'm a fucking dick, and I can relate. You know, you are what you eat, from, man. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, I just, I mean, I think it's interesting. I mean, I, I like to have Netflix. I've never watched any of the original programming, but the the Hemlock Grove has kind of caught my interest. But you know, a lot of times I'll throw uh, the Netflix on with the kids are here, and I really don't want to throw a fucking werewolf movie on. And the no, that's definitely there. not appropriate. Um, just a little <laughs> spoiler. You don't know the guy's a vampire Just a yet. Spoiler. Just a uh, spoiler. You don't know the kid's a vampire yet. He's like the spoiled kid, like the rich kid in the neighborhood. And uh, this girl, like, he's like this guy is like f- acting really weird. This girl is like fidgety, and she raises her hand. She's like, "I gotta go to the bathroom," and then it like zooms in on her, like a tampon sticking out of her bag. She goes to the bathroom, and he like is like, "I need to go to the bathroom too." And then he meets her in the bathroom, and. You hear this like, oh, oh, and then you're like, holy crap, this guy's weird. He likes to have sex with girls on their period. But then he like, it shows like under the, the stall. Of pussy? No, the, the, the guy is like on his, yes. you see the guy on his knees in the bathroom stall. Like you only see the knees under the, you know, like the stall. There's like the two inches that's really like weird and you can see the feet. And so you, get, you just like, it infers that he's like going down, like sucking the blood out of this girl's vagina. Dude, that's a whole new genre of porn right there, vampire. It's, awesome. it's, it freaks me out. It freaked me out, and then there's I don't know. It's it's good, but definitely not appropriate for kids. There's gypsies. There's werewolves. <laughs> well, it, well, and listen though. I mean, it solves the age old <laughs> problem that the vampires have always had, which is they don't like a blood substitute. They like to actually have the real thing. They like something warm. But now you don't have to turn <laughs> anybody into a vampire or fucking kill or maim anybody. You just have to have you know a, a good rotation of women and know you know what their cycles are I have mean, a corny realistically joke. you know where, where does all that blood go anyway you know what i mean hold so, on corny joke all right corny joke <laughs> what did one lesbian vampire say to the other lesbian vampire what see you next month <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. uh, that's a good one that's not that cheesy it was unless, related unless they had some kind of infection then it could be extra cheesy <laughs> A little extra cheese on the taco. That's nothing like a fucking conversation <laughs> stopper than cheese on the taco. Whoa! 
<laughs> that gong was crazy. Going Who did that? <laughs> nope. That was me, sorry. The guy that was outside by the car that was beeping also has the drums set. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we need to make this show interesting is Google effects. <laughs> oh, since the toolbox fucking isn't working this week, we got to go with what we got, right? <laughs> you got to play to your strengths there. Exactly. <laughs> Sean, what are you doing with the other hand? You don't want to know. I might want to. Well, the guy who was honking the horn is giving me a blower, a uh, blow right now. <laughs> 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 uh, I like the puberty voice crack in the middle there too. That was great. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, let's do a little segment thing. We talked about doing segments, so let's talk about Surf Dubs Week in Review. So this is a little segment in Overdose where we talk about my. My Perfect. shitty videos that I put out this week. Um, no, I don't think they're shitty. I think they're all right. But okay, so let's see. Let me pull up. Let me pull up a link here. The first video I did this week was the Macklemore Drawer. Who here saw that shit? I, I enjoyed that. I thought yeah. that was good. Yeah. Talk I, amongst yourselves. Tell, tell I reposted more. that there on Facebook. I think two or three times that day, just so everybody who hasn't blocked me yet from their feed was gonna be good, and, <laughs> good and tired of me by the end of the day, or they're gonna watch that goddamn video. So I got oh, off to good. it. I got off to it three times. So I was gonna say, is that's what you're telling me, right? Is that yeah. I got you good? I got you good and stiff. Yeah. It did, man. <laughs> Um, sad part is that was the same time the maid came in. It was kind of embarrassing, but hey. <laughs> so, I just kept going. I'm, I'm just, just going to go. Let me say this about just that Just a little video. more for you to clean up, bitch. Sorry. For, for people who don't know how this shit <laughs> works, this like, I've only got one camera. I would eventually like to have multiple cameras, but when you record this shit, I don't use the audio from my phone. I use the audio from a separate mic through a separate computer, so you have to sync all that shit together. Um, but it's it's kind of a pain in the ass because you, you get all this shit set up, you get your lighting set up, you get your camera set up, you get your audio recording set up, blah, 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 fucking blah. And that's a whole process in and of itself. But then I'm supposed to be, like, listening to the song on, like, a quality headset, but I've got, like, a broken-ass fucking rubber ducky headset that I paid, like, $9 for, like, four years ago. And one of them is broken, and, like, the cord doesn't quite reach all the way, so you're, like, trying to fucking play and listen, and it was kind of a pain in the ass, so... Uh, I need to get better equipment to record that shit. But I, I liked the video. I had fun. I, I liked it better after I saw it. Um, and everything. Well, okay. I had that one. I had that one criticism. Constructive criticism is, uh, you know, the music was great. The drums were wonderful. Um, Sean, click away from it, Yellow Bus. Click away from him. He said criticism. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding, dude. Go ahead. I'm gonna be out of the rest of the show. <laughs> Nobody got my joke. Can't win them all. Okay. Anyways, yellow boss. I'm sorry. Well, I was just saying, uh, if you do, if you do it to where it's only the acapella, then you can get your true remix in. So, like, you know, it might have been a little distracting for some people. You know, the thing is, too, is off. if you've got good software, you can usually like deaden that track enough. But it's a lot of times it's hard to find that shit. That's the problem is finding that stuff. I'm thinking I might do more like hip hop type songs because it's not a real percussion set then, so maybe that'll yeah. make a difference. But uh, what kind of what songs would you guys like to see if you had to see a drum cover? What would you guys want to see? Well, I just I, I would just like to appreciate Surf that you know I love when my kids get in the car and they're like, "Hey, I was watching Surf's video and uh, she wants the D or she loves the D," and my kids. <laughs> <laughs> what? And uh, and the funny part about that is, see, my kids uh, they love that song because they've heard it on the radio, the edited version. And honestly, even though that, all they'd have to do is look it up on YouTube, or they would, they're too lazy to and never have the unedited version. Neither had I. So when I played it for the first time, you know, my six-year-old's eyes were just lighting up, you know, because he was just like, "Oh, you said that word." <laughs> oh, swear, swear jar, swear jar. Tell him which one, swear jar. Tell, tell him swear jar. And that's like his new thing, swear jar. And, they, and then he's like, you know, if you could just put a dollar every time you said a swear in the swear jar, and he'll usually say this after I go on a tangent, you know, and I said about 47, 48 swears. If you could just put a dollar in there, I'd be good, you know, for, for the whole week. But yeah, exactly. at any rate, though, everybody enjoyed it, though. Uh, the, the whole family liked it, and uh, and we're now all privy to the uh, explicit version. Uh, well, good. I'm going to start a swear and jar, and I'm going to make Jamie contribute to it. And then and I didn't realize Macklemore's a white guy. I mean, listen, yeah, I have nothing white against uh, people of color, but honestly, it sounds, uh, I just, I guess I just assumed he's like, more yeah, like yeah, a hip hop. Yeah, perhaps yeah. he just sounds like a deeper voice. I, I thought he was a uh, African American, you know. Yeah. And um, and when I saw him there, I was like, holy shit! <laughs> you know, it's like it's I, like Vanilla Ice. 
I think the rule is the sooner that you wake up in the morning after a fucking bender and record, the more likely you are to sound like you're all like, hey, what's up, baby? You know, I'm just just doing my thing. Um, Okay, so maybe I'll do more of those. My other two videos, I see what I tend to do is one week. I always measure it from the last overdose video because it's like it's Tuesday night every week. So I what usually you'll see is like overdose and then three videos. And those three videos, one week will be like two music videos and one entertainment video. And then the next week will be like two entertainment videos and one music video. Um, I don't know why I felt the need to point that out. But that's what happened this week is I had <laughs> two entertainment videos and one music video. So the music was Macklemore. And then the two general entertainment videos were um, the differences between gaming and music on YouTube and the Dub Loves Ben and Jerry's uh, Free Cone Day. So we don't have to go through each one of them. but um, I, I did enjoy the, uh, the, the second one. I haven't seen the Ben and Jerry's yet, but I did enjoy the second one. I watched it 312 times. Um, oh, what? that one. Yeah. And you know what? Yellow Bus and I did a commentary right after that one that I'm going to do like a follow-up to this week. Possibly, but I need to get I need a gameplay footage. So if anyone out there, so that's not, is that us, not live? That one that we did? No, that's not live yet. I, because oh. what I did when we recorded that, I'm not going to explain it here. It's boring for everyone. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to repost it with a. I need like an eight or ten minute gameplay uh, from you, Yellow Bus, that I can put over. So if you can send me that, that'd be cool. I need to start playing then. But uh, but anyways, okay. So that's my segment. Ta-da! Where's the, my fucking gong? I don't have anything on, man. I'm too busy masturbating. Sorry. Jesus. Jesus. <sighs> Jesus. There we go. Okay. <laughs> pizza hello, there. Hello, hello. Wait, was that an effect or was that fucking Gilman ordering a pizza? <laughs> Wait, do you got one for this? Just turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the show's new slogan. Just turn it off. <laughs> Okay. Uh, is that a hand check? Who's got uh, Who's got a good Chicago story? Yellow Bus mentioned this uh, this topic. Who's got a good like? Who's got? Everyone's got. For our viewers out there, I'm pretty sure all of you right now are fucking in Chicago. What's this but going on the line? Future viewers, we're from Chicago, and so everyone around these parts has got a Chicago story. So who wants to start with their? Chicago well, I can story? I can start with my little one about. So Let's the book of here. The Book of Mormon. Uh, <laughs> I was like, you know, I have to pay for parking or go to the L train and then take the train into the city. Um, and, you know, there's a flood, so my mom is sitting there like, oh, what floods? I don't know what streets are good and what streets are bad. And then Joe was like, well, you should just use this parking whiz thing. And so... Uh, Recommended from Latuzak. Parkingwiz.com, W-H-I-Z. And whatever and, I look uh, at, I think of urinating. Like whizzing. Yeah, me but too. Anyway, that's totally. Just, just me. So. I think of the Seinfeld the and, whiz. And, yeah. <laughs> but uh, so I go get this eight dollar parking thing, which in Chicago is like amazing for a whole night because it's, it's like a like gift from God. It's Twenty like to fifty. Or, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm like, this is awesome. You know, I get on my, uh, I get my GPS out. Yeah, I get my scooter out. I get my Segway. camel. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I, so I drive down to Chicago. It takes about it takes about two and a half hours on a Friday evening, and uh, you know, I keep coming up. I got this. Okay, I bought an eight dollar thing, and it's pretty much you bought it, so it's cheaper, but you gotta go to that parking garage. My GPS continues to suggest two thirty West Washington. You are here. I hate that. I look that. at the ticket, and it's like the ticket is saying one eighty North Franklin, and I'm looking around. And if you've ever been in downtown Chicago past the loop or if you're in the loop, there's green parking, green parking, green parking. Everything's generic. And then it's like, well, shit, where am I? There's like five Jersey Mikes over here. There's like three <laughs> Subways and a Jimmy John's over there. Like every other thing is like either we like our sandwiches or a Jersey Mike. The Dunkin' Donuts interspersed every other block. Dunkin' Donuts yeah. and Starbucks are pretty much every other block. Yeah. <laughs> They're inter- I, interspersed on the north, south, and east, west streets. Th- th- there's two in my building, yeah. So pretty much, I uh, I got this eight dollar parking thing. Realized it's only ten dollars for the parking thing. Realized I wasted twenty minutes trying to find it, and then my phone died because I was so flustered, and the GPS was through my phone that <laughs> on the way home I once again got lost, and my phone was dead. So like, what are you gonna do? So that was my Chicago story. Yeah. Even so typical land navigation was out was of the, the question. Lost. Once the once the phone's dead, it's like who's got a fucking map in the car nowadays? I ain't gonna ask for directions. 
Do you got that man syndrome? Because I don't. If I'm lost, I'm like, help! Somebody tell me where I am! <laughs> well, it's funny because Christy was freaking out, and she's like, where are we? Are we lost? Where's the car? Because I couldn't find the car. I, once I found the car, I can get home. I know how to get home. But she's like, I don't know where the car is. I'm scared, Tim. I'm like, I'm looking around I'm like, there are homeless people licking their lips right now. This is not cool, Christy. Do not do this to me. Well, you're Arizona, you're home of Rack and Willie. You should don't look like a tourist. I told you. <laughs> oh, I know brutal. where your car is behind this back alley. <laughs> I've got many Chicago stories, but here's my little quick one. My wife and I get off the train, jump into a cab. I pull the, the door closed because she gets in first, and the door opens back up. So I like I look over. And there's like this this drunk homeless guy just standing there, like wobbling. He's like, oh, and the cabbie's like, close the door right now! And just starts shouting. So I, look, I close the door and he just speeds up. They're like zombies out there. It's The Walking Dead. The Chicago is The Walking Dead. That's what it is. And there's always yeah. some guy who's like, hey man, you lost. Oh yeah, I'll take you over there. I'll I'll walk you down to Congress Theater. Follow me. And like, thank you, helpful, helpful old wise, you know, fucking Denzel Washington looking man. And then he's like, yo man, you got thirty dollars. My wife fell from the second story and she broke her back. A guy told me that once. He's like, we were working on this apartment. My wife fell right to the floor, broke her back. I'm like, man, that is a fucking crazy story. How can I not give you any money? Unfortunately, yeah, I'm gonna tell you that I don't have any money. On the way to the on the way to the theater when we finally parked and we're on our way to it, this guy has this like two kids and he started I, I grabbed Christy and put her on the left of me because this guy like he's like, yo, 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 starts like putting this paper in her face and like just rambling on and it looks like he got, it's like an eviction notice. And he's like, I don't, I'm like, I don't care, man, you got evicted. It's your fault, Obama. <laughs> on a side Thanks, note, didn't you, and, didn't you and Tom black out so bad one night in the city that you beat the fuck out of each other? Woke up and no, thought no, that you no, got it, in a street fight. No, no, it, we don't know if it was each other. It could have been a band of street thugs. <laughs> was that the night that you rode the L for like ten hours, passed out? Yes. That's funny. Next, I'll make it for that. Okay, next story. <laughs> uh, see, my, I have no interesting Chicago stories. I only went to uh, college for a year in the city, and I. Parked right around the corner, you know. I got you know. Is that the same corner that you worked on, or? Well, no, it was the opposite corner. What? Okay. Was, the corner east is where I worked. The corner west is where I went to school. Or I pretended I went to school. And for people who are them. are dense and don't get the sexual in you, I know we're talking about Sean doing ZJ's for for nickels. If they you don't, don't know what a ZJ is, it. you probably can't afford it. Dude, seriously. <laughs> Nickels, I, was working, pancakes. I was working for fucking pennies, man. Jesus Christ. Matt, what'd you say about pancakes? I said shit and pancakes. <laughs> uh, story of Sean's life. So I don't have any. I don't have a whole lot of interesting Chicago stories. Well, Matt, you live in the city, right? Yeah, I'm trying to pick a good one. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to narrow it down. You have so yeah. many options. Well, there's one. Uh, one Sun Saturday. Um, buddy was in town. Uh, we decided we were going to drink a handle of rum chata each. Rum along, with, <laughs> along with a four pack of Goose Island Bourbon County Stout. Um, it's like it's probably 10% alcohol uh, or so. And also a four pack well, of Christmas What is rum sales. chata if I can stop? Yeah, you know, for all the viewers, because, oh, wife, because, my, because my wife came back Saturday after having a girl's night with some other relatives of mine, uh, Surf's wife and to my sister and everything, and she's like, rum chata, rum chata. And I, <laughs> um, rum chata. Do you know what horchata is? That like Mexican rice water? I do. Yeah, she, horchata, she, yeah. she compared the taste of it to that, but as far as I know, that has no alcohol content. It's basically uh, that with like rum in it. With it's, some rum. Really? Okay. All right. Horchata, who, for well, our viewers who don't know, horchata is traditionally made from tiger nuts, um, but it's actually made with a lot of different types of nuts in the States. It's basically cinnamon milk water. Awful. Absolutely fucking it's awful. It's fucking fantastic. You, if, you, if you get a bad horchata, it's fucking bad news. It's if you awful. get a good one, like if you get a good one, it's, it's like heaven in your mouth. It's, it is it's fucking Absolutely. awful. Surf Sean would me, liken surf, it to come surf, in his mouth. Surf brought me one one day, and I swear to God, it was like, honestly, I just... Dr I yeah, but you know what? Sean's like, Sean's like Sean's like that guy who's like, Ugh, I ate ten things and I don't like anything else. You're that and eight guy. of them are dick. Yeah, that's not cool. <laughs> no, nine are dick. Oh, <laughs> oh <okay>. sorry. <laughs> One's air. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sorry, balls. 
Yeah, man, I didn't mean to interrupt so, you. Oh, I was problem. just I was just asking what the alcohol content, if you knew, was approximately in that because uh, she, so, my wife compared it to tequila rose, which think, is just sort of like strawberry milk. You I think know? it's like 17 and a half, maybe, maybe weaker than that. It's not Are very strong. Are you Googling? Strong. You're Googling, aren't you? I was about to look it up. Fuck yeah, Google that shit. <laughs> yeah. Google, uh, I was just asking for a, a general idea because I know I'm going to have to I'm gonna get I want to say 17 and a half. I'm this shit now. So. 27.5 proof, so even less than that. Okay. That's uh, like a strong so, so, you know, um, drinking a handle of that each, playing NBA Jam on the PS3 all day. Um, at oh, some yeah. point, we slept for a while, took a nap, and then got up and decided to go to the bar, which we ended up at a, an Am- a bar called Emmett's downtown, which is probably like a, I don't know, block or two from me. And we know, I know one of the servers there um, from frequenting the bar. <laughs> means he goes there every day. Uh, it's like Norm from Cheers. Hey guys, that's what we're doing. Huh? Meeting her out at 2 a.m. at a different bar, so that was open till 4 a.m. Ended up out till 4 a.m. Get to about the corner from like a block from my house, and I apparently decided to. I, I was going to yell and sprint away. <laughs> so I just took off down the street, and my buddy got me one time to the same spot, and apparently I took off again a different direction <laughs> and decided I was going to sleep outside that night. And <laughs> next thing I know, it's 6 in the morning, and there's like an ambulance and a bunch of cop cars around me, and it's like, what the hell are you guys doing? Just trying to sleep. <laughs> ambulance. <Well, laughs> that's just fucking expensive. <laughs> they used drunk logic on me to get me into the back of the ambulance. I'm like, I'm just tired, man. But <laughs> obviously, if you're passed out here, someone thinks you need help. And I was just like, okay. That's, that's, yeah, that's that's really drunk logic. That's good. <laughs> I, like, I just want to sleep, man. Dude, that shit's that's funny, man. I, uh, I've i got a little story about screaming and running away, by the way. Um, I went through this period where every time I would get drunk, I, I didn't scream, but I would just be like, hey, I'm going to run away. <laughs> like, uh, it's, it was a weird. It was a weird phase. I don't really have anything else to say aside from also, yesterday. <laughs> that I ran. Then I ran away several times. Maybe a month ago, I was at a bar and apparently I was drunk massaging like a forty-year-old lesbian. A four? Forty? 40. Oh, forty. <laughs> I was like, for a second, <laughs> I heard four. And then my, that's when my friend dragged me out of the bar. I had no idea what was going on then. <laughs> Interesting evening. What about you, Lich? He's like, you've got some fucking shit show stories. Uh. You know, I yeah, I don't. I'm trying to think of a, a real good, funny, entertaining one, but I, I think you know I didn't have a lot of familiarity um, with the city growing up because uh, our our father um, grew up in the city and basically just just hated it. You know, didn't didn't like to ever go down there. So I was probably when as a kid I was probably in Chicago, you know, maybe five times or something. You know, so never really knew uh, really about anything down there. And uh, I I don't drive uh, for those viewers that that don't know that. So. I decided uh, my wife and I were separated for a period of time, and uh, our oldest son, who's now going to be 13, was maybe about a year and a half old, and he had just learned how to say the word. Uh, the first word he ever really said was fishies, and uh, it's because he kept seeing a commercial on TV for the Shed Aquarium. So I had talked to a buddy of mine, and I said, you know, I'm thinking about taking him downtown, but I really don't know how to even get down there, you know, trains. And uh, it was a buddy of mine said, man, it's, it's no big deal. Just look up the trains and look up the you know, buses. You'll be fine. So I went through all this prep work and looked everything up, took the metro downtown, got out, found the first bus, but you actually had to had to get off uh, and, and then go to a, another bus stop, you know. And um, I, I, wanted, I was basically scared shitless, you know, because here I am in Chicago all by myself with like a one-and-a-half-year-old, and I'm trying to carry a stroller and a backpack with, you know, the diaper bag stuff and all that. And um, we wound up running into like this 87-year-old lady on the, on the first bus, and she had been on the train with us as well. And I guess she comes down there like every Sunday and shops uh, ever since her husband died like 15 years ago. And she was really cool, man. She like saw that I was just all nervous and just sweating, didn't know what the hell to do, you know. And I she said, "Where are you going?" And we wound up getting off the first bus, and um, you know, she pointed out to where and actually walked me like the half a block down to where the other stop was. She's like, "No, it picks up on this side, and you're looking for the 402 or whatever bus it was to go to the Shed Aquarium." And uh, it just wound up being a, a really nice act of kindness from you know someone who <laughs> just kind of could sense that I so was. So uh, you've got a fucking good Chicago. Stress. So, right, that's that's so, that's, yeah. that's rare. That's good. But I mean, I, but I was scared to death. I mean, going down there, leading 
leading up to it, you know. And, it's and intimidating I, the first. It, it really is, man. you know what I mean. And, and my buddy, uh, you you know him, Surf, uh, was my friend Kevin Dobbins, and uh, I remember was, Kevin. Uh, yeah, yeah, and he was, uh, you know, he's, uh, I mean, it's nothing racist. He's a black guy, you know, and he grew up in the city. <laughs> and he, but but he just told me he said, and he just said it. He said, "Man, Jim, don't worry about it." He said, "Once you get down there, you'll be." Be fine, you know, and that's exactly how he said. It. He said, you know, man, you get you take a bus or a train to get anywhere in Chicago. And growing up in the suburbs, you know, I'm not used to that. I'm used to the transportation being very, you know, sparse and spread out, and having to have a car to get to where you need to go. So I remember yeah. when Jordan dropped an N bomb in front of Kevin once, and he just laughed it off. He was really cool. <laughs> okay, he just let it roll off his back, you know. He's hey, man, there's, you know. <laughs> I just well, we were looking at the front door because there was a problem with the front door, <laughs> and for our viewers, uh, Latuzak and I are dad is is known for uh you know rigging stuff up so the uh, the, the the latch had become loose because the screws were working themselves out of the wooden frame so you know a normal person will invest the dollar 38 for the the little wood spackle or wood glue and fill it in with some wood filler and redrill or you know reposition the latch one of those two options not my father he breaks toothpicks <laughs> and, and shoves them, them in, in the, the hole. hole oh yeah yeah, it, yeah so fix them in the screw hole so he can re-drill the same holes without moving the latch or, or doing anything else, waiting for anything to dry. And so, long story short, that obviously didn't hold up <laughs> for long. So one day when Kevin was trying to get in and out, the door was like half up. And Troy was like, oh, yeah, sorry. My dad N rigs this all the time. He drops the end right front. I'm not even thinking about it. And he, he just turns like, if Jordan could get any whiter, you know, he got whiter. And he was like, uh, before he could even say, oh, my God, I'm so sorry, Kevin was just laughing. He's like, it's no for, big deal. Yeah, for the people that don't know him, man, Kevin was just a real cool, calm, laid-back type of guy. You know what I mean? And, he was uh, like, my dad did the same little, shit. little mini afro, you know. Uh, he actually went to uh, it's a college uh, for a couple of years with uh, Sean Combs, uh, P. Diddy or whatever he's calling himself these days, you know. And um, Eventually, it's just going to be puh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, Prince went to a symbol, you know, for a number of years. So the artist formerly known as Prince, you know, this fucking picture here, that's him, you know. <laughs> so. That's funny. Yeah, he was a good dude, man. Yeah. Um, okay, you know what? We haven't done any of my topics yet, and here's one that I thought was kind of interesting. I don't know why it popped into my head either, but um, is baby talk good or bad for babies, or does it, it doesn't matter? Yellow bus, you tell me. I don't have any babies. Well, I mean, just in general, do you have an opinion on that? <laughs> I don't um, have any babies. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't your yeah, best I, know of. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't really think it matters. Uh, they they still learn the words, and I mean, they finally get the pronunciations down later. I don't know. I turned out okay. I think my mom talked babyish to me. And I think, too, I mean, I'm the oldest of six kids, and I have three myself. And honestly, I think it, it, it's like anything. you got to use common sense. I mean, when they're younger and they're not saying really anything, you know, and you want to kind of screw around and say something. I mean, I, I embellish and change words around all the time. You know, my youngest is named Nathan, and I say Nathan, but I, I make it sound like I have a lisp. I'll say, hey, Nathan. Come here, you know, and it's, I'm not, I don't think I'm screwing him up at all. He knows what his name is, you know, but it's one of those things that as what? they get older, they is... start to pick up on things. I don't think the baby talk is detrimental. I think what's detrimental, and I, we actually saw this with, uh, with our, our, our younger brother, uh, as well as, um, with, uh, I'm, I'm starting to see now with my youngest is, you know, letting them point at things and go, Ugh. and then going, Oh, you want that bottle? You know, and then like doing the sentence for them. I think yeah. that actually hinders them because then. You're just, you know what I mean, you're allowing them to just kind of point out what they want and never actually having to develop the skills necessary to say the word or even attempt yeah, to say the point word. Point and you know? grunt. So, yeah, <laughs> pretty much just a, eh, eh, you know. So. I just used fuck, bitch, and shit around my kids, and they turned out fine. <laughs> Story time. I had Sean over <laughs> to my house once with my cousin, and... Uh, <laughs> well, I've been waiting to hear this since the pregame okay, warm-up. <laughs> I don't know, she's four or five, and, like, so Sean's fucking being Sean dropping all kinds of F-bombs, whatever else. And I can see my cousin, my cousin and kids starting to, like, she's she's starting to get, like, a little uncomfortable. But I'm like, what, like whatever, it's just Sean. I'm just kind of laughing at my breath. And then she says something. And then Sean's like, yeah, I try to, like, suck it on my cock or, like, dick or something. <laughs> like, totally inappropriate for, like, a four- or five-year-old. And she just looks down at her food. She was like, yeah, let's watch it on the cock. And, like, I just I remember <laughs> feeling not only... So so intensely awkward in that in that split second, but 
just wanting not not wanting to have want, wanted to laugh harder in my fucking whole life at what just unfolded. So, <laughs> what what you guys need to understand about Shank is what you see is what you fucking get. Like on here is no different than at work, in personal life, in the library. Like this is not a person you want over for dinner in the bathroom with with your parents. You do not bring Sean over to house for dinner. Well, you do if you really don't like your parents, and and if you got nothing better to do, and well, you hate yourself, like, like like if you're dating someone your parents hate, bring me over, <laughs> and they will honestly all of a sudden turn around and like that individual. Yeah, that's probably how that would go. It would, yeah. It is what it is, man. It's fucking life, man. You live one fucking time. Fuck people. Yolo. And sometimes not even that. Um, exactly. My thing on the baby talk is is kind of a combination of everything. Like, okay, so Tim's like the like the ultra laid back, right? Like, eh, you know, they'll probably be fine. Like, and I've read stuff like when people are bitching about like kids who still have their doo doos. Well, we say doo doo for our viewers. Uh, that sounds like shit to everyone. It sounds like poop. My strange family calls pacifiers doo doos. I don't like passy pansy. Give him the, the pansy. The fuck. I don't like that. But so we say doo doos, which is somehow. Superior because it's poop, um, but uh, it's ours. but I read this article about like oh kids that are four or even five years old that still have their pacifiers and it's like well they eventually don't have them right so it's kind of like the same same line of thought as Yellow Bus is like yeah like you know you could probably fuck them up a little bit by doing it too much what? But, like they're gonna work out Uh-oh. and then the opposite of the weird. spectrum is like yeah you no, it's like, terrible like connection but... drop robot voice in your yeah, phone you, you, so. somewhere in between you're doing it like <laughs> sir if you're lagging man yeah, sorry, you're just like frozen, and we're not really hearing anything but like a robotic type of voice. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of funny to be honest with you. Well, someone else, someone else, take over the topic, then. There you go. Well, now I can hear you, but you're fucking all topics. over the place, man. You look like a fucking, I mean, even more than a jackass than normal. So, oh. um, can anyone hear me, or is it still fucked up? No, we can hear you now. Yeah, we can. But it was fucking hilarious, oh. man. All right. Well, as long as it was entertaining. Otherwise, feel free to fucking take over the topic. <laughs> that um, was funny. <laughs> Well, all, all I was saying is like uh, uh, nothing meaningful as usual, <laughs> but uh, which is basically that like I fall probably somewhere in between. Like there's times with my son when, like yeah, I'll, I'll talk more animated and childlike with him just for excitement and tone. But by and large, I just talk to him like a normal person. And like people all the time criticize me. They're like, he doesn't know what you know. Incompetent means not that. I I don't know why I use that word. Like, it's not like I call my child incompetent or something. But, like, I'll use a regular word I would use with anyone else, and people criticize me for it. I'm like, you know what? How else is he going to fucking learn the words? Like, I'm not trying, I'm not yeah. ramming it down his throat. And, dude, like, there's absolutely nothing hey, wrong with that. Hey, let's fucking study for six hours. Like, some. Yeah. That's not like, you know, the four year old Japanese girls that they forced to fucking play piano for 20 hours a day. Like, I, I'm, I don't sit there with like, a fucking dictionary and be like, you better know Webster back and front by the time you graduate kindergarten, you little fuck. No, but I, I think that's. It's good, though, for him because, I mean, Logan, the, the middle child, I mean, he's for six years old. He has a huge vocabulary and, I mean, uses big three, oh, four, enormous, five syllable words, and he uses them in the right context, too. And part of it was that, he, you know, he's always looked up to his 12-year-old brother, but, I mean, just some of the things that he hears me saying and the fact that, you know, we're walking around when he was little at the store, in the, you know, in the store, and he was in the cart. And, you know, I talked to him, and, you know, I, I joke around. So I've never really gotten much into the baby talk. I just kind of goof around with the kids and everything, but I – I guess probably have a pretty extensive vocabulary that I use. Uh, not that I know what all of it means, but uh, I act like I do. So you know, but he's picked up on a lot of that. I think that's absolutely helped him. You know, I, I guess mean? I've because always just wondered why teachers. we do it too. Like it's interesting. It's almost like okay, you know, when you don't understand another person's language, so you raise your volume in hopes that they'll understand. Like why do we do that? When you're like, yeah, no, me no speak no English. You know, or well, I do speak English, but you're you know, fucking language here. stupid. Yeah, you just get louder for no reason. Like, why do we do that with kids? As soon as we a kid, we see like a baby. The first thing we do is like me, 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 me. That shit. And I just wonder why we do that. I think it's kind of interesting that it's our natural tendency. I wonder what that is. I wonder when it started because it's probably cultural. It's like social programming, right? But it, like eventually, there had to be a first person who was like me, 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 with a baby, right? <laughs> I yes, I suppose I would. Uh... Yeah, it probably did originate from, you know, some drugs. Surf drug strange game. thoughts. That should be a fucking series right there. Yeah. It's like how I can't fucking connect my thoughts. <laughs> surfing, surfing the brain waves of surf. Beep, 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 beep. All right, so who's got another topic for us? I want to talk about uh, 
college and basketball players getting paid something. I think that was uh, the Tuzik topic. Something other than cocaine and sex? That was, well, yeah, 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 and, and, yeah, and all the free shit they, that they get that they yeah, with the, don't with, claim with, that they get well, and everything else. Go ahead, but. Gilman. I think you have some. I'll take a uh, free scholarship of tuition rather than getting paid. Well, yeah, I would th that's the same thing I was going to say. Is like, yeah, they're not getting paid, okay, regardless if they're going to become professional or not. The fact is you're getting a fucking free ride in fucking school, man. If you have some talent... <laughs> You know, you're getting a fucking. They're fucking handing you a diploma after four years and saying, "Here, douchebag, go ahead and be your fucking <laughs> hey, whatever you, you want." Hey, you did be. the bare minimum, and we kept you around because yeah. you fucking can support the three point line. So here, yeah, but, oh, yeah I, okay. don't these guys get endorsement deals too, or no? No, uh, and that, well, no. And, yeah, and in college no, they're not allowed to. But my my thought wasn't, and my father brought this up, and, and, it, and it's a good point. Okay, the hockey, you know, NHL and uh, baseball, yeah, Major League Baseball, they both have minor leagues. Those minor league players uh, that were drafted from colleges and things like that, where they got their full rides for free, then go on to play in the minor leagues. That uh, the you know the the Major League Baseball and NHL then eventually goes. They have farm systems that they then go and bring up players that they think have, you know, progressed enough and that they want to, and they're paid. I'm not talking about paying them a lot of money, but, I mean, these colleges are making hundreds of millions of dollars hand over fist with the TV deals and everything else, and these players will get blacklisted because they, they took a handout or because they took a, a free, you know, a, a, some free clothing from, a, you know, somebody that wanted to possibly endorse them down the road. I mean, they, it's the minor leagues for football and for basketball. I mean, is yeah, it but not? But it, it is the minor leagues, but still, that's the way to get your name out. And the fact is, you know, when you, you know, when you're going into college, you know, you do have these people saying, "Hey, you know, go to, you know, Duke. We'll give you this and that. We'll buy your mama a house. We'll buy this and that." <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> Sean really does come from the ghetto. No, we'll buy your mama a house. Because your old daddy well, left. We'll get a yeah. free Wi-Fi and shit. Seriously, and it's like, you know, it's it's a temptation <laughs> to say, free "Hey, yeah, that's what." You know, that's what, you know, we want to do. It's just the fact that it's always going to come back to bite you in the ass. And then, you know, the school gets sanctioned and everybody gets punished. It's the fact that, you know, Gilman made a great point. is You're getting a fucking free ride. You're getting a fucking free education. And, you know, even if you don't end up becoming a professional basketball, football, hockey, any kind of player, it's the fact that take that fucking free education they're giving you and fucking use it. Don't just fucking sit there and fuck all the cheerleaders, and then when the four years is up, be like, oh, I'm fucking brain dead because I fucking did keg stands for four years. <laughs> well, anyway, my point was I wasn't talking about uh, it being, you know, a lot of money because I know that even in the minor leagues, they don't make a ton of money. But you look at the progression of, say, a baseball player, um, you know, and he, he goes to college, he gets his scholarship, his ride, he plays, you know, baseball in college, he gets drafted. And unless he's just this, you know, super grade A, one in a million player, he plays in the minor leagues probably for a couple of years or more. Now, when you're in a college football program or basketball program, you either get drafted or maybe picked up if you're lucky in free agency if somebody liked you, or you don't. You have no career. You know, and you're you're trying to play well, for the Canadian League or something well, you like also, that. You know what I'm saying? Also, so it's well, kind of a make or break. It's all. Well, you also right? have to think about it too, though. Yeah. Uh, Tolu Tuzak is that when you look at basketball, they only have an active roster of 15 players per team in the NBA. Yeah, you know, when you're talking no about your league system, so right. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, 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 kind of is where they have like the, you know, like you could play in a, I, I can't remember what the name of the league is, but there is a like kind of a minor league where like all the teams have, you know, kind of like their players were who aren't performing up to the standards that they should be, that they'll go to. You know, is, is it to the, <laughs> yeah, is it, is it to the extent of, um, you know, baseball? No, because you know, think about baseball where they have what an active roster of, what, 45 people all the time? And then they have a triple-A, double-A, a single-A, so you know. So it's 20, 25 in baseball. But. I mean, it's just, it's, I mean, even that, I mean, you know, you got triple-A, double-A, uh, double you know, it's just, there, there's a shitload of, uh, of talent out there for baseball as compared to, you know, of course, football and um, basketball. Well, my point, I guess, was is that in baseball, you can actually, you can be an average player and not a, a superstar, and, and you can still make a decent living, uh, you know, playing the game that you love, being in the, in the minor league system. Uh, you know, whereas in, in football, which is a, a much more uh, physical sport, you know, and I mean, you see some of these, you know, these players, their career ending in college, you know, they're, they're, they're getting paid and allowed to accept, you you know nothing supposedly that's that's the story that they're that they're feeding us in college and then they either get drafted or again they they don't and they have no you know no no real career 
uh, it's, it's, it's a make or break situation, you know. You know what I think? I so. think that the the problem is 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 uh, well, I don't know if it's the problem. I don't I don't like how much sports stars get paid and for the sole reason that it creates this whole controversy about trading and contracts and this and that. It's like, hey man, if you love this game so much and you would have fucking played it for free anyways, then everyone makes one million dollars a year. That's enough. That's enough for anyone to be happy with the game they supposedly love. But I'm sure there's all these arbitrary arguments against that, but it's just like I think that w there needs to be just a, a salary cap limit because this shit just gets crazy. Because you know what it is now? You know what the NFL is now? It's not about football. It's a political game, like everything. It's a fucking joke. It's a total joke. Well, I think it's is more it not... basketball than football, but uh, I mean, when it comes down to it, football you're you're easily replaceable, but basketball there's less. I mean, with when it comes to stars to like normal people, there's a lot more of a gap. And I've noticed as of in the past two decades, the players have a lot of say. Like some of the coaches have no power on their team. I mean, look at Dwight Howard. He complained his way off of the Magic, and I mean, other teams, I mean, Miami, they they pretty much said, we're going there, whether you like it or not, and they just made it happen, no matter what. Yeah, so I think, and, and I agree, too, that, that most uh, athletes are, are overpaid, you know, professional athletes and everything, but I guess it goes back to what we were talking about as far as the concert venues and the TV shows and things like that. Why should the school get all those hundreds of millions of dollars and the people that are actually the product that's on the field, the players, not see any of it. I mean, even some of the college coaches, it's ridiculous, six, seven million dollars a year to coach. You know what I mean? And All and these it, problems could be solved if they just took that surplus money and put it into something meaningful or philanthropic then, right? Yeah, like my internet porn budget. <laughs> right. Exactly. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who pays for internet porn? Come on now. Well, that's true, yeah. With with porn tube and everything else out there, yeah, who pays yeah, for that's it? That's true, yeah. I don't think I've bought a good porn in about five or six years. So. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, let's say you're going to pay, let's say, okay, we take popular sports then. And we're like, okay, we decided to pay them even though they're amateurs and there's a difference between amateur and professional. Then we have to, they're probably going to be like, oh, well, we're going to bust in and make every team get paid. You know, then what about, you know, college diving? And they're like, well, we want to get paid. I could see how that, I, I suppose, could, uh, you know, could trickle off into that, you know. We're um, in the walking club. We want a cut. Exactly. <laughs> Chess club, man. 13 people check out our link last week on our Facebook page. You motherfuckers. <laughs> you know they have they have collegiate um what's that Harry Potter shit? What's that game that they play where they Oh. Yeah, there's co collegiate there's collegiate quidditch. Quiche, the word quiche almost looks like quidditch on paper. I'm just saying, there's no D. It, it does, but uh, so and how do they play that though? Uh, they can pay me you know, to know. Musk, yeah. You can, should, I mean, as far as I, I know, you can't YouTube fly uh, in real life. Uh, well, yeah. Um, I, mean, I mean, if you can, that's great. Give me the link, I'll order one. Did, but, did, you know, the new Wedding Crashers has this. What? what you say, man? Teach, that's what they're teaching in college these days: how to fly on broomsticks. <laughs> all that money, we're, all that money we're paying them. You're a <laughs> <laughs> it's practical skill, guys. How the fuck do you think? How do you think I'm getting around? You know, I I'm not taking a, this pretty thing in the car. I used the magic carpet for years. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, Sean just wrote his cock rocket. I did. Why does it always come back to Sean Masper? I think that's like the default setting. Uh -huh. Why does it always like, come back to Sean's cock? What, it always yeah. it comes back to my cock. I mean, what what there is of a cock, I mean, it comes back to it. Well, yeah, I was going to say, you have to use something imaginary that everyone can it can conjure up their own images in their mind. Well, hold on, hold on, if you want to, hold on. Okay, it's out now, are you ready? Conjure <laughs> you up your images. Your oh, it's in so, now, sorry. Have you guys seen this thing on, um, on, I think it's going around on YouTube now. Okay, so... For our viewers who don't know, and maybe you guys in the conversation don't know either, but Dove recently hired like a forensic sketch artist, and they had people like women describe themselves, and then they had their spouses or other close people or strangers describe this person, and the two sketches looked completely different. The way people described themselves was generally much harsher and uglier than the way other people described them. And so this whole Dove campaign is like the true beauty thing, right? Like, recognize your essence type shit. So this YouTube <laughs> spoof parody is going around 
And like it's these guys coming in and they're like, Yeah, this lady just started asking me questions and she's got like her back turned over, she's looking down at like a piece of paper and she's like she's like, Tell me about your balls. <laughs> like it looks like she's taking notes, but they're like after a few questions, I realized that that she she was she was drawing me, and so it's like it's all these questions about their their balls basically, and so she mm-hmm. draws a big pair of nuts, and then it shows their nuts compared to how their wives and other people describe their nuts, and the new nuts are much more beautiful than the other ones. So unless you've seen the Dove commercial, it, you probably won't get anything from it, but I think it's absolutely fucking brilliant. Is there a way to share the links on here? Fuck yeah, doggy. Well, let's see if I can find that shit. I'm going to find that share, shit. Share, share. Yeah, I, we we can share everything, man. Oh, I see a share. Um, somebody's, somebody's sharing. Sharing is Karen, man. Who's sharing what? Awesome. This video, right? Is this what you're talking about? Gilman. Got yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Gilman, can you put it full screen and unplug your headphones? Here, I put it off. <laughs> it's on. But what you can't be? hear the sound, I don't think, until you unplug the suck headphones. my cock. Uh, well, actually, my speaker, I have two speaker plugs. Oh, I can okay, just fucking, turn it well, good for you, you fucking crazy bastard. Eric, can you hear an echo right now? No. Here we go, here we go. Oh, don't full screen it. If you full screen it, it does a black screen. Oh, yeah, it's black. We can't see anything. Oh, my God. I mean, it's all complicated. Yeah, I know. We really got to figure our shit out. Are you hearing an echo? No echo. No echo. That's interesting. I'm the forensic artist. I worked with the Encino Police Department from 1998 to 2008. Well, I came into this room, and there's this woman sitting there behind a drafting table. <laughs> couldn't see us, and we couldn't see her. She started asking us questions. Why don't you describe your balls? I realized after a couple of questions, she was drawing me. Tell me about your sack. It's just <laughs> stinky. Everyone, let's mute ourselves for a second. Red, old rags. The texture. I was more freckles than there used to be. <laughs> My mom always told me I had soggy balls. Um, it's like a frog that died and has been baking in the sun for two or three days. The older I've gotten, the more tired they've become. Once I get a sketch, I say thank you very much, and they leave. All I've been told before the sketch was to get friendly with this guy named Nathan. Today I'm going to ask you some questions about a person you just met, and I'm going to ask you some general questions about their balls. His balls were nice, round balls. New wave. The last one was cute. I'm going to show you something, okay? This is a sketch that you helped me create, and this is a sketch that someone described of you. I should be more graceful for my natural beauty. It affects my confidence, how I interact with the world, how I raise my kids. There's nothing more important than that, really. Do you think your balls are more beautiful than you say? I think the best part of that is Joe told us to mute our, all our mics, and Joe is the only one, only one that didn't mute his fucking no mic. Fucking muted mic. Yeah, yeah. I, missed, I missed half the video. Right, <laughs> Surf, you. Gilman, I think you need to un- unmute Surf. I don't know how. Dude, I don't know what's going there on. You go. you're, there on, you're on, you're on, you're on, you're good, you're good. Dude, I hit, okay, the, button. You're good. I hit the button, and then... You're the only one fucking laughing with yeah, your words. Yeah, I kept going back to you, and I was like, he's the only motherfucker who muted. Dude, I, as soon as I said it, I was like, all right, everybody, let's mute, and I clicked the mute button. I swear to God. You must have clicked the unmute button because you were the only one going, man. It was fucking funny. Dude, I, I blame it on Google software, man. I swear to God. 
How the fuck did he get the shit? Oh, it means, uh, guess what? Hangout toolbox must be up, bitches. Oh, that's great. Oh. Right right near the end of the show. No, oh, it's not for me. Who's a naked lady right there? I don't know. His dreams. Yeah, anyway, it's kind of... I mean, I have it here, but it's not doing dick. Oh, if you remove it and add it again, it works. Oh, okay. Oh, no shit. Dude, I am so sorry about the laughing, because that thing is so funny. That's going to be so bad for the podcast, just me sitting there laughing for three <laughs> Seriously, dude, who really cares, man? Uh, yeah. That's what makes it funny, dude, is that shit. <laughs> dude, like, I just spit all over myself. Don't you love that when you're having a conversation with someone, you see the spit leave your mouth and land somewhere on them? I used to work with a, a, a female who, um, like, she talked, man. I was, like, taking a fucking shower every time. It's like, seriously, keep your fucking spit in your mouth, chick. It's the Holy Spirit. And that was when she was sucking my dick, too. I mean, it was like, Jesus Christ. You know, Christ keep it warm. Jeez. That thing sucks. Dear Google, fuck you. Love, Sh Sean. Thank you. Um, okay, so what's our next topic, guys? Beer, liquor. Yeah, what, what, what kind of, what do you guys like? Beer... Or liquor. I mean, I like yeah. the liquor. <laughs> I like the liquor. <laughs> that's such a great summarization. Yeah. Beer. I'm a beer guy. I've never... I don't drink hard liquor. Never drink Why? hard liquor. I I'm, drink pussy, pussy beer. Like the... Like, I gotta watch pussy, my... That's where I thought you were I've, gonna I've, gotta, I've gotta maintain my girlish figure. And that's why I drink pussy beer. Not afraid to, not afraid to admit it. You mean... Nah, never mind. Um, okay. I'm up for it. I was just going to make a, a fat tap dancing lesbian joke about you, but I decided that it wasn't worth it um, because you're not even worth a fat tap dancing lesbian joke, Sean Shane. No, that's no I'm just kidding. Really um, I go back and forth. I have like a love-hate thing going on with alcohol in general. Like a lot of times I'm, I'm either drinking, I don't know, not regularly like every night, but like... I can get to that point, or I'm, I, I just don't drink for months and months and months. So it's weird, but I, I like whiskey, I like beer, I like specialty beers. I like wine, as everyone knows from what t last week's episode when Tim, Tim had an intervention. <laughs> <laughs> We're having an intervention right now. Because I'm drinking whiskey. What about you, Matt? I like fairly good beers, or uh, right now I'm drinking Jameson Neat. Neat. So, I love James. I like my whiskey's neat. Rack them. Lots of makers. Um, rack em. Makers is delicious. Well, that's pretty neat. I've got some makers right here, in fact. Uh oh, the lady's home. <laughs> <laughs> Shit's on lock. No, actually, I went to. Uh, I just went to Dark Lord Day this weekend. If any of you've heard of it, it's a huge beer release party, pretty much. You mentioned it last week. I saw your picture on Facebook. You got it like what five, six cases of that shit. No, you the well, that zombie dust. That's a IPA or pale. It's just a, it's delicious. But I I like good beers. I don't know a lot about them. I know what's good. <laughs> I know what tastes good. Yeah. <laughs> like it's easier to go out and not get as drunk if you're drinking beer because you can drink it slower. Yeah. I've been on a really good uh, Belgium beer trip for the past like two years now. The Belgians know what's up, man. Blue Moon got me started on Belgian beer. Yeah, Blue Moon, Shock Top, Stella. Shock Top. I like good stuff. Stella. Whole Garden. It's pronounced Who Garden, actually. Yeah, but I like Hose. I got yelled at. I got yelled at at a. From yeah, they, Yeah, there's actually like a pronunciation on like a glass. I think it's on the glass of the bottle or something like that. Let's talk about that. People who correct your shit. <laughs> For fucking no reason. Okay, so common one in Chicago, right, is don't ask for ketchup on your hot dog. Tim's actually been asked to leave restaurants before for doing that shit. <laughs> Only one time. And Wasn't I did leave. At, uh, I bought it, and then I left Gene Jude's, and I got uh, ketchup at McDonald's across the street. Uh, true, true Arizonian at heart. But uh, they say the reason that you're not supposed to put ketchup on a hot dog is because it, it, um, it takes over all the other flavors. So, like... The onion, the pepper, the mustard, uh, they're all supposed to be these, the celery salt. They're all supposed to be really sharp flavors. The one mellow flavor, aside from the dog and the bun, is the tomato. Um, so they say that the ketchup ruins that. That's why you have the tomato. 
But uh, it, yeah, I don't know. Okay. Sean's fucking quitting. <laughs> Fuck this. Nice. But yeah, what is that about? Some people just have to correct you on shit. It's not Ho Garden. It's Who Garden. <laughs> As a good example, I can't see now. I can't see now. Tim's doing a webcam and I change it into my pajamas. And he's like, <laughs> 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 this, this should be the fucking show. Just listen yeah. to the fucking background. I'm just leaving it on. Yeah. That shit is too funny. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. It's fucking well, awesome. Like, you know how it goes. And it was like all in indignant wife mode for a second. He's doing a <laughs> webcam. Like, how oh fucking dare you? But if I she was doing it with like shoes. Was. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a meeting about fucking, you know, Sex in the City finale yeah. that she was having. Yeah. I just put a shirt on for this show. I mean, I wasn't wearing one since I got home from work. Fucking. Sean wouldn't be dressed at all if it wasn't for, <laughs> for work. I swear to God, I'm not a technological retard. But I swear to God, I cannot get the fucking Google toolbox to work for me, and I'm about to punch the goddamn screen. Did you I said this in the pre-show. You're like a fucking senior citizen. I am a senior citizen. I deleted it. I'm trying to add it. It doesn't want to fucking work. My computer, seriously, in about three seconds, the whole connection is going to go bad because the computer's going to be thrown through the wall in the fucking neighbor's house. <laughs> <laughs> now we're broadcasting live from Shank's neighbor's front <laughs> porch. It will be. It's fucking won't do shit. I'm about to punch it. I swear to God. <laughs> doop, doop, doop. I'm just gonna move over to here real quick. We're gonna go so down. Have another beer. Well, what do you guys think? Do we do? Do we need more topics, or do we call it here? Um, I might need to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna this could be bad. bad. In a second. Uh, she's gonna change into mm -hmm. her pajamas. Pajamas, huh? We have sex tonight, so I really <laughs> gotta go, guys. <laughs> well, that's all right. We had fun. We covered a bunch of stuff. We'll have plenty for next week. Let's all thank Gilman for being our special guest again. Thank you, Gilman, for coming on our show Woo! a second time. No problem. Dude, Thanks bro. for having me. Give him a round of applause. It's a pleasure <laughs> having you. I don't know, bro. <laughs> Is that a fucking snuggie? No. Um, but uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys liked this edition hose. of Overdose. Uh, join us next hey! week for Overdose <laughs> Six when Christy is going to take off her clothes via webcam. How come we're getting off? Is everybody bored? One. Just kidding. <laughs> How come we're and jumping next off? Time, an overdose. A sneak peek at my girlfriend's top house. No. I can't. I can't even click. I can't even click the end broadcast button because Shank has got that. So and I'm not um, going to because I can't get the shit to work. So this podcast <laughs> is I've hijacked the fucking podcast. So, okay. okay. I'm going to get the fucking broadcast toolbox to fucking work. All right. All right. We'll say goodbye to Yellow Bus then. How's that? Let's do a compromise between ending the show and not ending the show. Let's just fucking kick Yellow Bus off. I can kick Yellow Bus off. No. I have no option. I'm like a god. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm really mad. This whole thing is pissing me off. <laughs> it shows at the top. It's like surfed up open capture. Smile. It's like Sean is. For our viewers who join late, Sean, Sean is is using my sign in because my connection's fucked up. <laughs> Bye, Yellow Bus. Say, uh, everybody say bye to Yellow Bus. Like, there's that? like four hot chicks like wrestling in the other room. I heard like a black chick cussing another chick out. Oh, I wasn't ready to fucking hear that. Yeah, that would have been great. That's why he had to go. So he exited, great, he exited himself. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't kick him. I didn't. Oh, okay. I tried kicking him last week as a joke, and the fucking the stupid software wouldn't let me. I'm telling you, it's Google's fault, man. It's the same reason my shit didn't mute. <laughs> I'm sitting there like a two-year-old. <laughs> that was funny. And I was, I was gonna unmute myself to be like, "Dude, press the button," you know. <laughs> but then I was like, "No, nah, no." Nah. I was like, "Maybe he's going for some kind of comedic thing here later oh, on." No, but, fucking uh, let, them let me know next time. I mean, I had no fucking clue. Well, I'm, wondering if I'm, having, or I'm wondering if I'm having a problem because I'm hosting. That's why. Probably. You now you fucking deal with my headache every week. Yeah, fucking a. I swear to God. But. Uh, but okay, so what what do you guys think now that we did like the 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 fake the fake out? Ending, we got it, man. Do we keep it going or do we actually end it? I'm gonna have, I'm gonna want, do a man? group vote. Yay for democracy! I'm good, man. I can keep going. Four of us. Yeah, I, I democracy doesn't right. work with an even number. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It doesn't. No, it's 
Well, right, guess what? I can't, I can't count anyway, so it's, it's fine. All right. Well, then, who's got the next topic? I, you know, what I think we should do is because we, uh, we we came up with topics over here, but uh, I think Gilman, he's the uh, the special guest uh, to yeah, to meet over topic. here. I think he should. Uh, I think he should throw a topic out there. Shoot from the hip, buddy. How about Seriously. up bitcoins? Bitcoins? Oh, have you guys heard about this shit? I've been waiting to try and buy them. I want them to crash again. I'm buy some and sell them. Right. I have. I, yeah, let me hear about this. I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. So I just heard this on talk radio, but I don't know much about it. So why don't you lead us here, man? Uh, the Bitcoin is like a, it's like a digital currency, basically. I guess would be a good way to describe it. Pretend money. Yeah. Um, I live that way, man. So it's up to. Yeah, I call it credit cards. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's like credit cards. <laughs> so, a couple of weeks ago, it crashed. It was down to like sixty bucks. It was all right. So it was at like two twenty. It dropped down to about sixty, seventy bucks per one coin, and now it's back up to about one thirty or so, one one forty. Hmm. It's pretty much. It's like playing the stock market with this digital currency. And there's when it first came out, it was it was really cheap. I don't know the exact amount. Um, so this is a, so this is a company, and you invest in this like you would when you buy stock, or. Uh, let me here's the here's the shaky thing while you look it up. This is what I heard on talk radio. They had a spokesperson come in and talk to the radio show host about this. And um, she was like, so what kind of regulation is there? Who's running this? Who makes the rules? Who ensures that people don't get screwed? She's like, because it sounds like a pyramid scheme to me. And he was like, well, basically the value in the coin is just the faith that we put into it. He's like, no one really regulates it, and it's just kind of taking off, and we don't know why. <laughs> like That was basically his explanation. So you can actually buy illegal drugs online with bitcoins. You can get acid shipped to you from some guy who's selling it on one of the websites. How did I not know about this? At, I don't know. I forgot the site name. But, no, so, I know where to get my acid from. Yeah, it's... That's a joke for the, who doesn't fucking know that. The developer called it a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash systems. It's supposed to be like um, untraceable uh, currency, basically. That's oh, all shit. digital. So we fucking found a way to give it back to Uncle Sam. Right in the ass, bitches. Yeah, Take until, that, Obama. Until they fucking right. find a way to fucking, you know, streamline that shit. See, I'm not the best person to talk about it. I've just been watching it recently. I, I still don't understand the breakdown of it. So so what, what's... I mean, pretty much it's like its own stock market, I guess, is the way I see it. Because I don't know too much about it. If you, There's a Wikipedia page about it. <laughs> On. We you know can, Wikipedia. They're so very like, accurate about everything. You can buy, you can mine bitcoins, which is like you basically use your processor on your video card or your processor to crack hash codes. I think. And, <laughs> and you and you earn this uh, virtual money. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have like I've been mining them for like three weeks, and I have point two five of one coin. <laughs> now it's actually, <laughs> hey Gilman, what, what what can you get with one coin? Uh, good question. I don't know all the sites. I have a friend who knows them. Uh, all. China. You can buy China. <laughs> Why? Well, I'd like to buy North Korea because then I take over that fucking country, and I swear. I swear to God, I'd be the fucking greatest leader in the world. That's two, that, that'd be two and a half coins. Uh, oh, fuck. That's going to take me like six months. I don't have that much time. Well. <laughs> I saw this, uh, I saw this like, Will Ferrell status update or something where he said something about, like, I don't know. Like, I, I've, ah, fuck. I shouldn't have even started speaking. I can't remember, but it's about North yeah, Korea. It's stop. funny, so I'm going to look it up. I'm going to Google that. Okay, you know what? So let's, okay, Matt, spin the wheel again since Bitcoins were so fucking and undereducated about it. We don't have anything to say. Um, let's see. Let's, how about how we talk about GTA versus Saints Row? I like Fuck that yeah. topic. Well, let's do it. Light him up. Who's going first? Well, you know, I mean, I know, Surf, you're a, you're a huge Saints Row fan. I, I mean, a huge GTA fan. And That's see, right. Fucking get I'm, it right. I'm, I'm, more, uh, I'm more of a Saints Row fan. I like the over-the-top fucking just absolutely asinine shit when you get to pe beat fucking people with fucking... 12-foot fucking dildos, man. See, that's the shit, man. 
when it's just totally over the top and makes absolutely no sense. See, to me, it's fun. GTA, I played GTA, what was the last one? Four, I believe? Five? Whatever it was? The one yeah, where they, had they got too serious in the last couple of them. So. I, just, I just couldn't get into it. I mean, I think it had, what was it, Nico was his name? Nico uh, yeah. Cousin. Yeah. I, just, I couldn't. Nico I, Bellic. I couldn't relate to him. Not like I could relate to anyone who's beaten someone with a dildo. I mean, I do do it three times a week, but that's just what my, my fucking, uh, you know, we won't get into that. Um, but it's just, I just couldn't relate to him. And, I, like, I get to, like, the, maybe, you know, maybe 10, 15% through the game, and it lost total interest for me. And when I got, when I played uh, Saints World the Third, I mean, I just went through it, just wanted to see how ludicrous it was really going to get. You know, and how ridiculous it was going to get. And every time, it was just fucking hilarious. It, uh, and, and, you know, and I've played both. I, I picked up uh, Grand Theft Auto I actually had gotten into. Uh, the first one I played was back on the PlayStation, and it was the uh, the top-down view one, Grand Theft Auto 2 or 1 or 2, whatever it was. And it was like a, a top-down view, and you could do all this crazy stuff, but it, it wasn't. Uh, you know, obviously wasn't you know the three D you know ones that came out with uh, with three and then some of its spin offs, and I, I played those and then I saw those get more and more serious with each entry into the series, and uh, and, and the the missions more tedious and, and difficult and, and some of them were just plain asinine you know and you're replaying it you know seven eight times you know to to get past a, a long section. And uh, Saints Row, I picked up the first one and didn't really get into it. Gave it about an hour or two and just was not that much fun for me. And I I put it on the shelf, got rid of it eventually. Heard how great 3 was and picked it up last year. I wound up loving it so much I bought all the DLC for it. Uh, I mean, I played the shit out of the game because it was just so over-the-top, goofy, fun. Uh, it wasn't, you know, there, there was some challenge to some of the missions, but it wasn't so difficult that it was irritating and frustrating. It was always fun and entertaining, you know, and uh, so, I, so I really I really enjoyed it, you know, and yeah, I'm you looking know, forward to the next one. You know, the what, what I liked about it is the fact that, you know, you got to, uh, you know, you mo- as you moved up levels, you unlocked kind of cheats, which, you know, if you were awful at the game, you were able to use them, and it didn't, you know, restrict you from earning trophies or uh, rewards on Xbox because... It wasn't really cheating, you know. Like I know, if you go online for uh, Grand Theft Auto, you can go into the phone and you can, or whatever it was, you can enter cheats. And you can put in cheats, but it disabled yeah, the ability disabled to earn the achievements. Ability. Yeah, yeah, because it, it just—it's a game that took itself, I think, a little too seriously, you know. And it, it, although it I played it and I enjoyed it, uh, there was, and then there was a couple of expansion packs that came out that I did not play. But I did hear good things about. It. Yeah, I, I just felt that they were—they were—they're going for more of a realistic, serious story, tone, whatever you want to say, you know, whereas Saints Row is just like, how fucking absurd can we yeah. make this, you know, <laughs> how over the top can we make this, because yeah, it's co-op, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, and that's the other thing, too, is it's uh, it, it just bloody good fun with a friend, you know. I guess <laughs> I just uh, feel like the thing that I've always liked about Grand Theft Auto is they've kind of got that best of the both worlds, like you were saying, with uh, the more serious thing in some ways, like maybe cinematically or storyline-wise, but they've always had that edge, that satirical edge where, like, they're just constantly making jabs and poking fun at at um, popular culture and popular society with the radio stations and the advertisements and a lot of the dialogue in there. I, 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 I haven't played much of Saints Road, so I can't say much about it. I've only actually, Latuzek, I've only seen you play it um, a little bit. And it, just, it, ju- it did just look like what you described it, like over the top, and that's fine, but I, fe- I feel like I connect more with like Grand Theft Auto because... I, I like, I don't know, I just like their style. I like it a lot. I, Sean, you said that you didn't connect with Nico Bellic as a character, um, and I felt like that with San Andreas. I, I didn't connect with that at first. Now now that I've gotten into hip-hop over the past, I don't know, seven years, I'd probably like it, but at that time I wasn't super into hip-hop. So the whole the whole um, like ghetto black culture thing for me, playing that game, was a turn-off. I didn't enjoy the game. But you had just the opposite experience, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I've... I, I played three. I played San Andreas. I mean, I enjoyed. I like Vice City. That was the one. Yeah, where, uh, Ray Vice City Oda, was I my think, favorite was the main character. That one was a ton of fun. I thought you know it didn't that take itself too seriously, but was still. And then I think after that it went downhill as far as um, you know San Andreas. You had to did you have to like eat and, and the, like weight well, lift yeah. to build up your well, strength. San, San I never Andreas played it, but I just realistic. heard. Yeah, that's what I heard. And then I heard they tried to get away from that a little bit. When 4 came out, it was going to be this modern marvel and everything else. And they took away some of the things, I guess, that they had screwed up with San Andreas. But I think they still kind of kept a lot of the a lot of the seriousness of, of, of 
the story and, and everything else, you know. So, although I enjoyed it, I mean, I still played the game, but uh, yeah, I enjoyed them all. It's like I said, it's just with the last one, I I had it, I bought it, and I, you know, and I'll probably get five. I'm not gonna lie, I'll get five and I'll get Saints Row uh, four, but it's just the fact that. You know, I mean, well, am I going to say, am I going to, you know, relate to the character and enjoy it? You know, who knows? I mean, I can't say it. I haven't seen a whole lot. I know a lot's coming out about uh, Grand Theft Auto V, you know, this week. You know, I know IGN's doing a big thing about it, uh, releasing a bunch of information. I've seen stuff on Saints Row, and it's still over the top. And, um, I mean, I know that game's going to be fun, and I, I, I think, will get Grand Theft Auto V. And I think, too, I, th I think it was Gilman that mentioned this, it, the co-op really does it for me with games nowadays because I am not a big competitive multiplayer uh, fan. I just, it, whether I'm good at a game or not, it's just, just really not my thing. I would much rather sit down with a friend, uh, the few that I do have uh, or claim to have, um, you know, one of my kids, whatever the case is, and, and play a game co-op. You know, I'm playing uh, Dead Island Riptide, uh, the sequel to, to the, the Dead Island, which came out a couple years ago, and uh, having a blast. I'm playing through with my son, big open world, fun game, you know, zombie killing and all that sort of stuff. But I mean, we played a couple months ago, Dead Space 3, that was great. And then uh, Saints Row, we actually, you know, had picked up and I played that, uh, you know, back, uh, whatever that was, last September, or October, I think, you know, and um, Borderlands, you know, a lot of those type of games. So, so I think the co-op really draws me in with a lot of the games now, you know. Yeah, I, to I totally agree. I mean, it has to have kind of a you know a good co-op, and it's the fact is when it's not so competitive, like you know Call of Duty and stuff like that, where you know you're playing and fucking people, you fucking noob, and I don't want to fucking listen to that shit. I want to have a good time. I don't want to fucking listen to people fucking uh, put me down because I fucking missed a kill and got fucking shot in the head. Well, that's what I tell my kids too, because my six-year-old he has uh, ADHD and uh, his his on medicine now that helps to control, but he still has these outbursts and he takes it real personally. A lot of times he tries to look up to myself and uh, to our twelve-year-old, so he's pissed off if he can't at six years old play at the level that we do. And even playing cooperatively or a game by himself, he'll get really pissed off and he'll get up so upset sometimes, even start crying about something. And I'm always telling them, listen, as soon as it becomes not fun, you can't play anymore because it's a game. It's supposed to be for fun and enjoyment and to get away from reality and the things that you have to do and the things that aren't so much fun, whether it be schoolwork or, or working or, you know what I mean, doing the dishes, those sort of things. So as soon as you stop having fun, you, you have to put it down. You can't play anymore, <laughs> you know, so. I, I mean, I, I totally I totally agree. And, you know, I don't know about you, Latuzek, but, uh, I mean, for me, you know, my son's 13 and, He's getting to a point where he's pretty damn good at video games, and you know I don't even. Someone, I get to a point where I don't want to play with him because the kid's starting to kick my ass. That's why I play co-op games with him because he's he's more of an asset than he is a hindrance, you know. Yeah. Because he still talks a lot of shit though, but like even in Dead Island, we're playing, you know, and he's running through just mowing through zombies, you know, and he's like, "Oh, and I built these Wolverine claws and put barbed wire on them and electrified them," and I'm like, "How the fuck did you do that?" You know, and he's just lighting people up, and I'm over here getting the shit kicked out of me by one guy, you know. <laughs> so. Exactly, I hear you, man. <laughs> yeah, well, what do you say? You like Saints Row or GTA better, buddy? Uh, I like both. <laughs> I mean, I have them both on PC, so there's the all the custom mobs, mods I can play with if I want to. And I have all the... Like, Saints Row 3 are bought on sale, and it came with a bunch of uh, DLC, I believe. So I got a bunch of free shit with that. So that's, that's a fun game. That intro is fucking awesome. <laughs> It's uh, it's definitely fun and over the top, you know, and just all the different weapons and uh, and the, like you said, the when you can when you get the melee weapon, the freaking giant yeah. purple dildo, it's hilarious, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's like it's like how do you not laugh at? That? I mean, it's like it's so unrealistic. It's fucking funny. Oh, it is, you know, and how you can customize your character. I had this like really tall chick with these giant tits that had like a man's voice. <laughs> I know it's just hilarious, you know, and some of the different outfits you can throw and everything. It's a I thought it was a fun game that didn't take itself too seriously. You know, I mean, and, 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 was, you know, I know you, you were saying you were saying you played the first Saints Row, and you know, Saints Row and Row One and Two were a lot more serious. I mean, they kind of followed in uh, Grand Theft Auto's footsteps, and I think they were kind of you know trying to be that big sandbox ripoff. And I think they decided that hey, you know what, we're not going to compete with Grand Theft Auto, so let's be different. Let's differentiate ourselves from. Grand Theft Auto because we're not, 
and uh, they kind of went over the top. And I think that's what set them apart. That would made it a lot more fun. But yeah, I, 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 I think I so as well because I because one and two. That's when I you know I heard it was basically you know it's a, it's a Grand Theft Auto clone and, and that sort of thing. And I think they really got their identity and their footing when they went and put three out and just basically said, you know what, fuck it, man, let's just have a good time. You know, let's make a game everybody will enjoy. Yeah, and <laughs> you can just jump in and out of it and not have to worry about any story or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. yeah, you're not upset if you missed something, you know, in that as far as a, a cut scene or a little bit of dialogue, you know, because it's usually just funny and satirical and uh, exactly. not, not, not too serious. <laughs> I don't always have a cool Facebook status, but when I do, an older relative ruins it with a lame comment. That's a meme going around I just saw. Oh, Okay. I'm just, I was just looking at a feed. I wasn't specifically referring to you. Yeah, I thought that was, I thought that was like an inadvertent <laughs> roundabout jab at me. And I was like, what the hell are you talking about? They really didn't <laughs> what the put fuck? anything on there because I don't know how to spell very well. Speak and spell. Who's lifting weights? What is that? <laughs> Who's lifting weights? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, if you... Hey, sir, if you've seen me, I don't lift any weights. Seriously. Yeah, no shit. The only thing I lift is fucking a pizza to my fucking face, man. One <laughs> ounce curls, the beer, too. Yeah, one yeah, ounce curls are good. 12 ounce curls. Good with that, man. I wish there was a snicker bar away because that's what I've been fucking. That's what I've been doing. I'm on the, I'm on the all snicker bar diet. F quit, soon to be followed by the all heroin diet. I find that that's a good counterbalance if you want to keep your weight regular. Yeah, I hear that, too. Good weight yeah. loss program. Yeah. Well, yeah, I hear you, you cycle on and off, though, like steroids, and I hear you're fine. You're just, you'll be fine, you know? So exactly. if you get too heavily into it, they got the clinics for that stuff, and you, you'll be good. Yeah, I hear Betty, Betty Ford's really good. Obamacare will take care of you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys think about this whole, like, the, I've seen this floating around lately. Um... And there's probably a whole culture name for it, but, like, not letting kids lose at sports. Like, everyone's a winner, Timmy. I'll be honest with you. With me, like, my son's played, God, almost every sport you can go through. And the fact is that losing's part of life. You know, you, you don't always win. I mean, you know. You I know mean, all about that, Sean. You know I all do. about losing. Dude, I've lost for fucking almost 40 years, okay? And, uh, <laughs> That would it be is. the name of your, your book, your biography would just be uh -huh. losing. <laughs> In the <laughs> negative. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Account overdrawn. <laughs> negative. Operates right. in the red. Exactly. <laughs> System it, down. It's really just, I mean, uh, who the fuck wants a trophy for second place? I mean, you know, who wants, who wants a trophy for participation? Seriously. I mean, you know, here. you're the best participator, Johnny. <laughs> here. What the fuck does that mean? Here, here's your trophy for participating. Fuck you, bitch. I lost. I would love I, to see I, Sean as a kid because I could totally see you thrown down on the field being like, fuck you, bitch. I'm out of here. I, I was watching. <laughs> Give me uh, my juice box. <laughs> it's, it's my mom's turn this week. She provided this. <laughs> you know, I was watching PKA and they talked a little bit about this and it was like. Uh, That's what we're going to call it for now, PKA. <laughs> You know, we can't really get into it, right? Just shouting into the screen at this point. That's what the show has become. There's some rest of development right here. Yeah. Th this will be on. This will be on the highlights reel. <laughs> How annoying is that shit? Yeah, exactly. All right. Anyways, you well, were I mean, watching I mean, Pekka. So yeah, I was, and they were kind of talking about that. And how um, I think they had uh, FPS Kyle on there, and he was talking about how you know he had went and he pitched game, and he was fucking pissed off. They gave him a trophy. He pitched like nine innings. He was fucking exhausted. Shouldn't have kept pitching. They lost. He walked in the winning run. He was like, and I got a fucking trophy for that. We got a fucking party for that. He's like, what the fuck are we getting a trophy and a party for? You fucking lost. You don't deserve shit. Seriously. You fucking lose. You lose. I mean, it's like, it's like okay, you're up for a big promotion at work. The other guy gets it. Do you fucking go out with your wife and say, hey, honey, we didn't get a promotion. Let's go out to a second best. Yeah. yeah. Woo. And, and I think, too, that, that that's what society, unfortunately, is going towards now. You know, the nonsense with everybody having to win and every everything is equal and everyone's equal. And, you know, bullshit. I'm sorry. They're not. There's some people that are smarter than other people and they come up with great ideas. There's some people that, uh, I mean, for instance, I don't see very well. I'm not flying a plane anytime soon. Nor would you want me flying your plane if you were going somewhere. I want somebody with perfect fucking vision flying the plane. Okay? It's as simple as that, you know? I mean... 
But I do believe, though, that uh, encouraging kids and doing things up to a certain age is is a good thing. Uh, and, and the example that I have is my 12-year-old uh, played softball. And when he was about five or six years old and got into it, we were living in Michigan at the time, uh, he was he, he played. And um, no matter how I mean, he practiced his ass off, and for some reason just he got really nervous. And in games, he just could not hit the ball. He just he would just always swing and he miss and get nervous. He psyched himself out. So anyway, finally towards the end of the, the twelve or eighteen game season or whatever it was that you know, it's just, just a little little kids league thing, he winds up getting a hit and uh, you know, he might get double or a triple or something like that. Well at the end of the year they wound up giving everybody little trophies for this or that or whatever, and his was most improved player. And it was and it was something that he didn't really win anything, but they acknowledge the fact that even though he didn't, he still showed up and worked hard for every practice and he still worked with me in between practices to, to attempt to get better, you know. And uh, it, but you know, but again, I mean, he was only five or six at the time. You know, I mean, I think that you have to you have to draw the line between being you know positive and encouraging, and you know, just fucking making it to where everybody's a winner. You know, because it, it's not always the truth. I mean, you really do. A lot of people, like you say, losing in life. I mean, it does. It it helps you. It really helps you to build character with things. Well, you know like seriously, I mean? if if, if so. mom's gonna walk in and pay a hundred dollars for fucking uh, baseball, you know what? Give me my hundred buck. Here, here's your hundred bucks. Give me my fucking trophy. And let me walk away and save myself two and a half hours, three times a week from watching a kid play baseball. <laughs> it's terrible. Seriously. <laughs> and the other thing that I relate this to as well is growing up, my father um, it pushed us all into getting into uh, the martial arts and to take Wando. And uh, I, you know, I, being the oldest, I, I had to deal with this the most because when he might, uh, our father is is either uh, just completely disinterested or he becomes just obsessed with whatever it is. And when we got into this, everybody had to get into it, and he would be personally offended if you didn't go to class and this and that. Anyway, being uh, in the suburbs of Chicago, and um, it, when they take your money to go and promote to test to the next belt, no matter how good or bad you were. If you could do the forms, if you could break, do the breaking technique, they still passed you. Everybody passed because they didn't want any, you know, parents uh, that were paying for these kids to promote and paying the a couple grand a year or whatever to go to it, pulling their kids out of it. Because, but one thing that our father always taught us is that you don't go up to promote for the next belt uh, until you're the best in that class. If there's ten other people that are going to go in and promote from this belt to this belt, you better make sure that you are the best, you know, out of that group of people. So you're, so yeah. Everybody's going to pass, but you know that you would have passed under the worst of circumstances. You know what I mean? Under the most stringent of conditions. So yeah. And uh, so I think that was something that I I kind of have always in the back of my mind, and I try to you know try to get into my kids' heads as well. You know. So I'm 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 sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sir. I was going to say I'm I'm conflicted on this one I, for a couple of reasons. One is just my own thoughts and sensibilities, but two is the fact that you know. Again, for our viewers who don't know, I own a business that we do with small kids on a regular basis. And, and one of the things is we're like an art studio. We do dance and music. Um, but so much in our industry, especially since So You Think You Can Dance and all these other fucking shows, has really turned the competition end of dance into the, the main course. And it's really turned it into like a sort of, sort of sport. And it's crazy. Before it was like when you'd go to conventions and you took a master class from a master teacher. They were a master teacher who danced for 30 years, and a dancer years, that's, a, that's fucking a long, long, long career. Um, now master classes are taught by Haley, who is on So You Think You Can Dance, and she's 18 years old, and I'm teaching a master's class. So it's, it's really changed the industry. What this has to do with what I'm saying is because the competition has been so far driven into our industry, We've deliberately made an attempt to be non-competitive, to promote collaboration of artists as opposed to competition. Um, and so this kind of goes in that same vein of thought with like winning and losing, because competition I think is good when it is in the spirit of um, what competition should be about, that exhilaration of the experience that you're competing, that you're, you're testing your skills at, and push them as far as they can go. That the other person is just as good or maybe a little bit better than you, but you don't want to admit that. And it gets so wrapped up. So I guess this is my point. Why does it have to be about winning and losing to begin with? Why shouldn't the focus be brought back to the experience? You know, like why why at a younger age should we be pitting kids against each other? On the other side of the spectrum, I feel like what you guys feel, which is like, yeah, hey, like dealing with losses is, is a part of life. But I think there's a middle ground there. Maybe we teach kids about perspective, you know, that like hey, okay, like the exhilaration of competition is still a great thing, and there should be a definite feeling of, like, gain and loss in some way. 
but maybe it shouldn't be in terms of like winning and losing. I think that's so that's so negative. Lo loser, you fucking <laughs> lose. Like, how do you say that to a kid? They're like, <laughs> I think I think the winning and yeah. losing is good because when you go for a job interview later in life, if you get denied the job, what are you gonna do? Go. Go home and cry. I mean, you just gotta go. That's what I'm talking about. Perspective with kids, because you teach the kid that you were denied a job, or it's just the absence of opportunity. That's that. There's something somewhere else. You know, those are two different ways of looking at it. You know that, yeah. Mike. Okay, I I I had I. Here's a little story, and then I'll stop yammering. When Jamie and I heard about our son Bradley coming along, I was clamoring to get a really good full time job, because we've always focused on our business. I've always had something part time. So when we heard about Brad. I was like, fuck it, I'm going full time. Went through this whole process for six months to get this this really fucking cherry job as a mechanic. Well, it's a small company, you know, things didn't work out, and after like three months, I was out of there. And it, at that time, like I had that that choice of like fuck, like my my I've got a, a newborn here, I've got all this fucking shit to take care of, and now I've got fucking no job. You know, this could be like the worst thing ever. And I know so many people who like that would have shut them down. Not that I'm like raising myself up. But I just had this kind of epiphany there. I was like, you know what? This is the best thing for me right now. This is just the way it's supposed to be. And it's not like I'm super religious or, or have some kind of crazy faith. But it, it worked out. Like a, a, um, the series of events that unfolded after that have just been incredible. So like my life's in a, in a really good place because I lost that job. Like if I was still at that job, I'd be fucking miserable. So I guess that's my, that's my point about like the stuff with kids. It's like... Do you teach them that losing the job interview is losing, or do you teach them that it's just an opportunity in some other way? Maybe that sounds a little sing-songy, like too happy, positive, you know, sunshine and rainbows and fucking unicorns. But uh, I don't know. I think that's uh, maybe that's what we should be focusing on with our youth. It's also different. Like, well, sports—you got one team that wins and one team that loses. I don't think. Yeah, no, nobody around. remembers who won la or who lost last year's Super Bowl. You know, it's just not. You know, what I mean, they're not. They're not getting right. And as adults, we grasp just... that. That's what I'm saying. As adults, we grasp that. But like you were almost saying, Jim, like in the earlier years, when you're like, "Oh, well, Bubba was only five when that happened." Maybe like for those years, like it, maybe there should be a compromise that way. That things aren't about the focus of winning and losing. And then when you have the fucking capacities to conceptualize what winning and losing is and not take it in a bad way, I don't know. I'm, that's all I'm saying is I'm just conflicted. I don't. I don't know how I feel about it. I guess I can. I can see all of the points in this conversation. Yeah, I mean, I can play devil's advocate too on, on either side of it, but that's kind of where I, you know, my, I personally fall somewhere in the middle, you know, and believe that, you know, unfortunately our society, our world is just based on, you know, just the competitive nature of things, uh, you know, being the, the, the you know, the, the best at this or the best at that, getting this promotion, whatever the case may be. And, and whether you buy into that or not because of the career thing and because of what we're, you know, uh, what's instilled in us and everything else when we're young, my point would be is that you don't teach the kid either way about the interview being a loss or it being an absence of opportunity. Ultimately, if you don't get the job, you know, if you're a person who knows how to get back on the horse, so to speak, because you've lost, you've experienced loss, uh, whether it be in school or some type of sport, you're going to go and you're going to apply for another job and you're, until you get a job that you want or that you that you need to have, you know. So it's really, I think, just teaching the persistence of, you know what, it isn't the end of the world when you don't get what you want and everybody doesn't always get what they want all the time, you know what I mean? And I think that's right. what differentiates people. Yeah, you know? no, I completely so. agree. I, I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that. I guess my thought has always been, like, are, is that process of feeling like, Oh fuck! I didn't get what I want. Can we? Can that be bypassed? That's what I'm, I'm getting about the whole perspective thing. I got. I, I can't speak clearly on the subject. And I misspoke when I said absence of opportunity. I meant to say something else, and I can't think of the word. But, anyways, yeah. You gotta. You gotta lose to win. Seriously. Well, Sean, tell us a little about that because you have this whole thing going on with like uh, redemption. It's, I know it's your license plate too, and I thought that was uh, kind of a cool thing. I don't know if you had something to say about that. No, I mean, you, just, you have to lose the win. I mean, my whole thing is throughout life is that I never look at anything as a mistake. It, you know, you never make a mistake. It, everything is a learning experience. If you take everything in life as a learning experience, it's never a mistake. You know, you, you, you have a child out of wedlock, and, you know, you love the kid, and you marry the mom. And it doesn't work out. It, it's not a mistake. It's a learning experience. You learn for the future. You know, you take a job and it blows ass and you fucking hate it. But you work it because you need a job. And everything I've did, you know, I've learned through life, through 40 years of, you know, things that have happened is that, you know, nothing is ever a mistake. Everything, if you can learn 
one thing from any everything you do that you think is a mistake, it's not a mistake. It's a fucking learning experience. And I've learned a whole hell of a lot in 40 years. And every every day, I it makes me a better person. It makes me a better father. It makes me a better man. It makes me a better person. You know, yeah, absolutely. I, if you can look at things like that, you can take the good from it. You know, um, I, I definitely agree with you on that. You know, but I think that the people that there's some out there that might have the same perspective as far as I don't ever make a mistake. Um, but instead of it being a learning experience, they just continue to make the same mistakes and just still look at it in, in, in the wrong light. You know, you're looking at it in the right way, though, you know, taken from that and learning and building from it. You know, whether it was a mistake or whether it was an experience that you had firsthand. Uh, or whether it was something that you, you saw maybe from a relative or a friend or, or something like that, you know, and decided, okay, I'm not going to go down that path. It's not for me, you know. So. Yeah. Well, exactly. I mean, that's the whole thing is that, you know, fuck mistakes. There's no such thing as mistakes. Everything you learn from it. If you don't learn from it, then you're a fucking moron. That's or, my, or that's you my just you, you put a watermelon in the oven and you cut a hole in it. Exactly, and you fucking have sex with it for the next 22 years. And, and you have Sean's, you know, th three nights a week. Three warm Jesus apple pie. Christ. Yeah, that, does, that doesn't sound bad. It's really not when she's warm. <sighs> Jim, you say. got some new sketches back there? I don't know if I have anything new. I got, uh, let's see here. Well, while you're ginder gandering, let me explain to our viewers Latuzek is um, a, uh, a phenomenal artist. He's a well known artist, and, uh, and uh, his work is incredible. It speaks for itself. But. We actually, we would like to get a logo going for Overdose. That's what we were talking about uh, earlier in the week. So eventually maybe we'll have something up where we can put a template up with a logo. What's that? Let's see here. That was the, uh, I, this is the, the blown up version of it, but it's from uh, a, a jackal from uh, the Halo series. Let me see if I can get that far enough back there. I don't know if anybody can see that. That's fucking crazy. I, I'm actually going to take some. I'm going to start scanning it in every week, and then I'll put it up when I, uh, you know, as my little template or whatever that's called, my screen, when, you know, when I leave. Um, but, yeah, there's a few things that I am working on. So And uh, and actually the overdose, I got a you know, couple of little things that I got in the sketchbook upstairs. So we'll start unveiling those next week uh, live, I think, on Overdose 6. Hell, yeah, awesome. hell, yeah. And uh, and then the other thing too is that I also a lot of times I have a lot of ideas floating around in my head about yeah that would be cool to do or that'd be cool to do but ultimately what I wind up sitting down and drawing is something that somebody else asks me to do so if anybody ever has thoughts requests whatever you know what I mean uh, yeah well, let's make that known to viewers and any random whatever you know yeah so let's make two things known for overdose any request three things. Any requests you have for topics, put in the comments, and we will talk about that shit in the moment, off the cusp, or if we miss them because we're too drunk or disorderly or whatever, we will cover them the next week. The second thing is requests for Latuzak, like he just mentioned. What the heck? What happened? I don't know. It just said, are you there? <laughs> I just got I, that, too. I didn't That's get weird. anything. Uh, me, me, me either. Oh. I don't uh, know but re requests for Latuzek for artwork, that's number two. And number three, requests for street favors, call Shank. Everyone knows that. Or if you have any videos you do prefer, get with Surf Dub. You know, if you prefer the uh, Surf Loves videos. Or, or I Love on Random Cows, bestiality style. That would be in my video, please. Please. Um, Send it my way. <laughs> be a fucking crazy series, wouldn't it? Just fucking randomly milking a cow. Trying to my publicly mouth. engage in bestiality. That shit's weird when you see that shit on the internet, like the public sex stuff. People are just two people are just fucking on a bus. I'm like, that's legit. I've that's been weird. talking uh, to my, to my wife. She's uh, bre breastfed our kids, and um, our 15 month old. He he still breastfeeds only, only a little bit at night now. But uh, I've been telling her I've been wanting to put together for a while a series, um, you know, called like the Breastfeeding Chronicles or something goofy like that. And like, you know, for instance, the first idea would be, you know, like she comes down in the morning, she makes me coffee every day, you know, and she goes to make the coffee and goes to put in the milk and she puts the milk in hers and, and goes to put it in mine and it's empty, you know, and she just kind of leans over and kind of off camera, you know, you only see the stream pulls one out and <laughs> mixes it up a little bit and then gives it to me and then just kind of has this snicker and smile while I'm sitting there oblivious to it on the couch. 
And then I thought another one would be good if going into like a public pool, you know, like in the summertime. Uh, sir, if you came uh, with uh, your wife and son with us last year, and you know yeah. some of the places around here, you know, four, five, six hundred people in the pool, and she just whips one out and starts feeding the baby. I mean, like waist deep water, middle yeah, of the no pool. Shame. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I just thought that would be a great video series to have, though, you know, but to have it all set up and everything like that, and then, you know, have, have somebody planted in the background just saying, like, damn, that's a titty, you know, or something yeah. funny like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, you got to think about the courage to do that, man. Like, yeah, yeah. when you think about that, that's basically the male equivalent of taking your dick out and pissing right at the pool. Like, it's like, you know what I mean? Like, how different is it for women? Because it's not like they whip their vaginas out, but I tell you, it's just right there, you know? Like, that's, you gotta fucking be courageous. Jamie was always, like, conservative, had the fucking apron thing, which is fine. That's just what she was comfortable with. But I always admire when Mitter's like, yep, yeah. <laughs> like, right in the kid's mouth. <laughs> yeah, some people are just, you know, completely out there, you know, on it. So, uh, my wife has gotten better with, with each child, you know. Now she gets to the point where she's just kind of like, all right, whatever, you know. I mean, she doesn't really just whip it out necessarily. She still makes a conscious effort to try to, you know, Know, yeah, kind of yeah. cover up what's going on over there, but uh, you know, a lot of times some ladies are like that's everything but the nipple. So. Story time. There are some ladies. One time, my wife Jamie told me uh, she was in the lobby with like I don't know if it was a new student mom or something, but she had like a like it was summertime and she kind of had like a like a regular spaghetti strap like just tank top on and but like she was well endowed and her breasts were very much about to hang out and you could clearly tell she wasn't wearing a bra. <laughs> and so just like right there, like. I mean, couldn't be more exposed, like, from the neck down, like, everything. Just fucking flat-out feeding this kid. I was like, that is awesome. Why don't I have her? Yeah, that's great. I mean, that's what... We had to give her free classes. That's what makes America the the place it is, I think. No, but I'm just... I'm like, wow, that's... I You know, you get to a point where, okay, it's like, it's a little trashy, but uh, but I'm just like, you have to give zero fucks to... To get to that level, I think that's that's pretty that's pretty admirable on on some level. On, on, in somebody's world, she's a fucking hero. I think a lot of it too is just being able to get past that initial like, oh my god, what are other people gonna think? Because you know, I went through that for a period of time, even like with my kids, you know, where it's like one of them would start to you know get throw a tantrum or act differently or something in public, and it was like, oh my god, you gotta stop, you gotta stop, you know, because why? Because you're gonna embarrass me, you know. So a lot of times now, I think it's just being able to let go of whatever is going on and just say, hey, listen, in a, in a, in a case of a mother breastfeeding their child, the, the kid's crabby, the kid's hungry, the kid needs to eat, and this just happens to where I'm at right now. So until they invent teleporting like in Star Trek, uh, this is what I'm going to have to do, and I'm just going to have to not care about it because it's going to... How much anxiety is it going to cause, you know, with me going and looking around and wondering if other people care, if they're concerned, and, you know, fuck them. So... Yeah, that's the point I'm at now, too. Like, I took Brad today to go get sandals because he really needed some. And, um, again, for our viewers, my son is two, so he he's just fucking all over the map. And so I was like, yeah, we're gonna not we're not going to put him in a cart. He'll just walk with me. It's fine. It's me and Daddy. And so uh, I get one sandal on, and then he just fucking takes off, just <laughs> running through the story. He's like, ah, oh, fucking laugh or whatever. Like, what am I going to do? Get back here now! And, like, make it a big deal. Like, I laugh my ass off and just chase him around the store like, I don't know, I just had a good time with it. Like, And then I got him distracted, back to the aisle. Thankfully, his other shoe that he took off was fucking still there. No yeah, way to it. And that's the part. Instead of getting um, pissed off about it, you got to be creative and, and figure out how you can circle back around and get yeah. and get him and get his little mind working to where what you want to do again. You know exactly. What I mean? And, that's and again, like, part, I'm, not, you know? I'm not trying so. to like put myself on a pedestal. I'm not. I'm not the world's fucking greatest father, um, but I'm pretty close. No, but no, yeah, but uh, that title but, two years in a row now. But uh, but yeah, legitimately, like you know, it's. I think about that all the time. Like, is this is this causing me more stress than what it's fucking worth? You know, it's like that net energy investment. You know what I mean? So. That's why I'm trying to just do that with uh, everything. You know, <laughs> just trying to let go a little bit more and not get as stressed out about things and. Because really, it's not doing anything except for you know thinning out my hair and probably taking off years of my life, you know. <laughs> so and, yeah, exactly. Yeah. In reality, what, what what's it all for, you know? So well, that's why you got it. You got to love guys like Yellow Bus too. Like uh, as you, our viewers are getting to know him, you can kind of see that uh, he's all, he's he's just a laid back dude. And like that's something that uh, I've known Yellow Bus since I was five. I'm 25 now, so we've known each other most of our lives, and it's something I've always admired about him because. He's had no advantages over me in life. We come from the same neighborhood, from similar families, I guess, in some ways you can say that. Um, we went to the same schools, but his life has been radically different than mine in that he doesn't experience problems. He doesn't have that filter that makes you feel like, oh, this is an urgent problem. Like, I've seen Yellow Bus in, like, extenuating circumstances, 
circumstances, and um, he's just he's just that guy who's always cool as a cucumber, man. Just hey, this is what's going on. Like as you see him now is how you'll see him at like at a concert. Everyone's like raging. Tim's like, yeah, man. Like, it's just yeah. Tim, and he's not a hippie though. I don't know why. The, I only, the, the, the only time he'll be different is when he's going down the aisle to say I do. Uh, how will he be different? <laughs> Well, he'll be just fucking like, why am I doing this? What the fuck's wrong with me? <laughs> oh, I thought you had a punchline. I didn't realize it was just a, a bad joke like the ones I tell. Sorry. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, okay, do we have another topic, or dare I say we call it? It's What has it been? Like, it's been two and a half hours? Two and a half hours, yeah. Probably call it now. I'm we'll fearful. hanging around for a little bit, yeah. It's so, about bedtime. It's your bedtime. Okay, all right. It's well, almost then, noon. Here we go. Begin outro. I hope you guys, we hope you guys liked Overdose 5. Be here for Overdose 6. If you don't, you're fucking, I don't know, you're crazy. So come for Overdose 6. Everyone say thank you again to our special guest, uh, Gilman. Thank you for coming Thanks, on two Gilman. episodes in a row. Anytime. And uh, we've got a bunch of cool special guests lined up, so make sure you guys tune in, and, and we'll probably see Gilman again in another few weeks. So uh, thanks again, man. Yeah, i got some right. great stuff coming up, so... Me. Yeah, it was definitely nice having you again there. All right, y'all. Check back on the channel for some other updates, and we'll catch you guys next week. Thank you. Thank you.